what it good be? Hopefully it's what it should be. It's your boy N O R E. What up? It's D J E F N. And it's drink chance, motherfucker. Yap yap. Make some noise. Now, right now, our guest, we got one of the most legendary producers of all times. Part of one of the illest groups ever to come out of the Bronx, come out of New York City, to come out of the world, D.I. motherfucking T.C. The man is a legend upon legends, and he's keeping, they can't coming out here to promote an album. That's one of them. The other one is one of my favorite raptivists, activists, raptivists, whatever we call it. He's a very positive brother. We got to talk about the time we had Russell Simmons on. Oh, shit. <laughs> we got to talk about the controversy. Are we going to talk about it? We got to talk about it. We're going to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, we, did, we didn't release the episode. So we don't got, I, you know, I could get these brothers so long, but I want to get straight into the interview. In case people don't know what we talk about, we talk about motherfucking Diamond D. Woo! And Tom Lynn Carly. Woo! Now, first off, let's, let's address, um, uh, uh, you guys have an album together? Let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Um, well, first of all, I love the intro that you gave to OG Diamond D. Oh, that's my guy. Obviously, he's a mm. legend in the game. Mm. Um, me and Diamond D have been working together mm. uh, on his last couple of albums, the Dime Piece albums. Mm. And so we have a great working relationship. He's one of the first uh, known, yeah. on, you know, a famous artist to get to sort of take me under his wing. Wow. And so when he did my show, People's Party, he has sent me a bunch of tracks. Right. And to show him some love and respect, I just bust on all of them. I was wow. like, let me just rap on every track. Wow. <laughs> and the next, he flew in town the next day and I played it for him, but I didn't realize it was the makings of an album until I seen his response to it. Hella organic wow. Wow. way to make an album. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I sent them like 10 joints and... Um, no, we're not. We're not. We're not. So you got, got, good, so you like, got the good gazelles on too. Yeah. I see. I'm watching you. Okay, <laughs> get that. So I was like, "Yo, you know, um, how many? How many you did? You know, I think he did like one or two. He like, yeah. nah, I did like like eight or nine of them. Right. You know what I mean? So that more or less just led to the album. Cause that's how is that how you usually send beats? You send beats in, in like bolts like that, tens and depends. Right, right. Depends. Cause I get confused. I I, I right. need like two beats at a time. If you send okay. me two, and short attention span. Yeah, and especially <laughs> if you send me like ten yeah, beats and right. then they all fire. I'm like You're I, I, I shut down. Yeah. So how, how did you able to prosper through that and get uh, and record like eight or nine? I mean, right. it's different producers. That's it. There's some producers who like you need to come to my studio and work with right. me. There's right. some producers that only send you the one they want you to rap on. Right. Some producers send you a pack. You know, I work right. with Madlib a lot. You might get a pack from him for like with 200 beats. That looks yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a legend. Like right he there. making like seven beats a minute. Like you I, know what I'm saying? I'll be confused. But I'll be, I'll be. I appreciate the love that Diamond showed me because I know for a fact the caliber of, of how he produced it. I know for a fact he ain't sending right. everybody 10 beats or 12 right. beats. I right. know that Not I have to reach a certain elite status for him to even trust me. Right. To even, you know what I'm saying? Right. To not take advantage of. You know, you, sometimes you send people them, that amount of beats, they make their own album. These days, a nigga will make his own album and put it out. Right. Before right. you even knew he did uh, it. Yeah, awesome. I would imagine it's weird it to, send, to send yeah. beats from the era that, that, that you're coming from to send beats to people must still be weird, I would imagine. <clears throat> I mean, not at this point. You, you, know, you, you definitely, definitely you know, we definitely. Because there's you know, nothing like working with the artists in the studio. Of course. You know, before the internet, you had to actually sit down with the artists. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Or contact their management. I, I like that era better. Like, I always yeah. loved the era when, you know, you couldn't send your rail. You had to right. go and record on the yeah. rail. Is that why people always uh, credit, like, the 90s and the 80s that it, 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 for it being better music to, than it's happening right now is because we actually, you couldn't get a Busta Rhymes verse sent to you. You had right. to go in there. There had to be yeah. chemistry in, yeah. Yeah. between yeah. the producer and the MC. By the way, right now, as we speak, right, right. now on Ebro Show and Apple, they're debuting a single from Gotham album Woo. featuring Busta Rhymes. Nice. Wow. The quiet one. Quiet. That's the name of your album, the Gotham album? Gotham. Yeah. Gotham yeah. makes some noise for that. It's a dedication to New York City. Yeah. Now, now you've been out there with Dave Chappelle catching COVID and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I might be the cure. I'm the only one in the crew who didn't catch it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see Angela Yee too. She was, she was, she, yeah. she, she, but she was a part of the crew. Oh, no, 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 no. I think her people's got it. No. I was there that night. They all went to karaoke. By the way, oh, you see, I got my DJ Khaled coat, Khaled coat on that right. I bought, by the way, that, <laughs> that I bought from the Dolce Gabbana store. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I put, but I had to say, because when I'm on the way here, I told Fat Joe, I said, I'm interviewing uh, Diamond D and Talib Kweli, and he said, Diamond D is literally the person who, it's the nicest thing I ever heard, heard Fat Joe ever say about anybody. Anybody, right? He said, he, he said, 
you know, if it wasn't for you, he's like, he literally came to, you literally came to him and said, you got to rap, get the fuck out of the streets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What up, Joe? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. What up, what up, Joe? What up, Joe Crack? What's up, bro? How you feeling? Down in DR. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful, bro. It's white birthday. Bro, yeah, I know, I know. Shout out to Lorena. Mm-hmm. Oh, put, put, put it closer. Diamond D saved my life. And we knew each other since kids, and Diamond told me one day, Yo, Joe, everything you do in the streets, you got to put it in the raps. I know you like the rap, but you're going to die out here, you're going to go to wow. jail. And if it wasn't for that speech he gave me, I never would have really took rap serious and never would have rapped. So, right. um, that's you know, real, Joe. That's real. But, for life. You know that, D. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I'll give you a call later on, player. You know what's up, D. I love you to death. Always. Y'all feel, like, y'all feel like the beef of Bendy Show is about to come on right now. <laughs> 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 All right, my brother. We love you so much. Thank you so much. I love y'all, man. All right, one up, one up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo, so so um, I would like to I would like because it, it literally was just like that. I literally right. jumped in the car. Um, he called me for uh, one of his other friends. Where I told him I got him. Right. Um, Pistol Pete, pick up the bitch, Pistol Pete. Um, I got you, bro. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and I and I said, yo, it's funny because I, I know the relationship with Dit. Right, so right, I was right, like, I'm right. going to, and he literally said, yo. That man literally was the reason why I started rhyming. Like the reason why. How, how, how did you do that? What, what, what was going through like, your no, mind? He, he was already into hip hop. Uh huh. You know, uh-huh. this is like you know um, early nineties. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, you he, know he, he was in the streets. Him, his man Tone. Rest, you know, rest in peace, Tone. Uh-huh. Um, the whole Terror Squad crew back then, TS Squad. Uh-huh. But um, like you know, he he was already like kind of in it. Okay. But he saw me doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in a group called Ultimate Force. Yeah. <clears throat> he saw Lord Finesse doing it. Lord Finesse is like right in the next building. Over. We ain't popping the same bottles over there. I right? <laughs> better relax. He, he seen me pop. He tried to pop one, man. Okay. It's not the same. All right, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, so basically just Joe seeing people he fucked with, tangible people doing mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, from then, from then on, we ain't never looked back. You know, we, we went in there, we made Flojo. Flojo started off right. as a, um, a promo for Red Alert. Wow. It was back when Red was doing them promos. Mm. And, um, so it was a radio, just a radio, like a freestyle for the radio. For right. Wow. But this I would all tie in real quick, make a long story short, right? Um, at this time, Chris Lighty was managing me. Mm. Right? Uh, I was on Violator. No, I was on yeah, Violator. Yeah. Um, and that's and that was the connection between Red Alert, myself, and Chris Lighting and Fat Joe. Wow. Wow. Ultimately, Fat Joe wound up signing with Chris, Chris Lighting. Like early violator on wow. Relativity. Yeah. Wow. And wow. <clears throat> off and running since then. God damn, make some noise for that. <laughs> that's how I, I ain't forget about you and Dave Chappelle on COVID. So let's, go, <laughs> so, so let's get back to that. So we, yeah. y'all and they were running a tight ship over there. Yeah, I Diamond was, came I, out to the to, I love to Yellow Springs. Which I was getting tested before. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, so what, so what, what, I, for people that didn't know, because um, I just have Instagram, right? I didn't get invited, so I just... Oh, you always, you got a, uh, uh, y'all got an invite. Uh, yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna Cypher did tell me, but <laughs> I just gonna let, that's one of the people to feel good. All right, so, so um, describe, what is this, a comedy show, and then he brings you guys out to do some songs, or... Yeah, well, basically this summer, um, he has a neighbor, his man Steve out there in Yellow yeah. Springs, who had this pavilion... And, you know, I've known Steve for a while. I remember when Steve bought the pavilion. Mm. Nobody knew what he wanted to use it for. What, what is a pavilion, It's like, a, it's oh, like, it's a, like a, an outdoor... Outdoor structure in, like, a cornfield. Like a field. patio okay. type oh, he owned, yeah. thing. Right. Right. Like children of the corn. He owned all the children he of the corn. He owned the cornfield. Right. He corn built field. a space for his, him and his people yeah. to hang out. Okay. I had gone to a birthday party Dave had thrown. They had mm. thrown a, Dave, a birthday party for Dave the year before. Mm. It's a nice space for people right. to hang out. Mm. But when the pandemic happened, Dave got the idea to... Michelle Wolf is comedian. Mm. Who was staying that's at his the, house? That's the, that's the lady that runs ten miles a day. That's right. The white She's lady. That's right. Man. That's I'm right. Point. I'm on point. Yeah, she on yeah. She uh, Michelle's dope. Uh-huh. Michelle was out there. Donnell Rollins is always out there. So they Ashley said, Larry. Yeah, Ashley Larry. Mo yeah. Armour's always out there. Mm-hmm. So they like let's um let's tell some jokes in the cornfield. We'll set up the chairs. We'll socially distance. We we will test the audience, right? So they could come in. I think it started because it's 20. weird for black people to be in cornfields, and this time oh, we want to be in cornfields. But yeah, that's right. The, uh, the town that's people true. had uh, meetings. Right. They 
try to get it shut down, but Dave would listen in on a city council meeting right. to listen to what the town people would say. You know what I'm saying? And then they would right. make jokes about them. You know what's <laughs> genius about the situation? Is that's the first time that you could understand that Hollywood could exist anywhere. That's what he kept saying. He kept saying that L.A. Wow. is he dead. Said that? He said L.A. is dead. Hollywood is dead. From now on, they got to come to we, where we at. So if I, I yo, say yo, that, yo, yo, if yo, I say I, Hollywood I is here, that. I didn't yeah. know he actually that's said that. He, but that's, 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 that's actually happening right now. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, leaving. Yeah, that's right. Everyone's yeah, leaving L.A. Yeah, yeah, so right I, now, Joe Rogan left L.A. Yeah, went and went to Austin. Dave is in Austin right now with Joe Rogan. They doing shows together. Austin, Texas. Yeah, and then they're gonna be in Houston next week. You know, but that's what that's what Dave was on. So what is it, Youngtown, Ohio? What is it? Uh, Yellow Springs. Yellow Springs, yeah. Ohio. Right, yeah. right. Where there's fish in the river. Yeah, oh, that's right. what like, Diamond well, went well. Diamond went kayaking when Nico is. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is kayaking? That's when you go like that? Out there with some fresh air for a canoe and shit. I ain't never did that tried, shit. We tried, to, that's just fun. we tried to take Sada Baby uh, kayaking. He was like, wait, that's the shit. Y'all got to move the shit with, your, with yourself? Right. You got to right, move the right, boat yeah. with your yeah, own No head? motor, no motor, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm used to jet skiing and shit, shit like that. Yeah, so, all right. We just read today that Kanye... Is worth six point six million billion billion billion. billion. Okay, which abs- actually, and now I'm assuming that's his net worth, right? Yeah, and they actually saying that he's the richest black man mm. in the U.S. In, in history of U.S. Is, that's what uh, the headline. Let's keep okay. it. Let's get add some context though. There's about seventeen hundred billionaires on the planet Earth. Only about 12, 13 of them are black. Wow. And most of the black ones is entertainers. Even wow. though we the majority on the planet. Wow. That's racism. That's like generational right. wealth racism. Right. You know what I'm saying? No this question. should be way more black. Uh, absolutely. So we happy for Kanye and Jay-Z and all them, but the fact that the 1,700, only 12, 13 of them are black, right. that's crazy. Yeah, that, that's crazy. But um, just staying on Kanye for a second, do you think that, is he talkable still? Can you still talk to somebody like when you were 6.6 .6 million? Like who billion, can get, billion, bill, billion. That's a big, billion, that's a big difference billion. between million and billion. Like who can give you advice is, at this point? That, that's, that's a very interesting point because right. the fact is you're breathing very rare air right. and only certain people are able to exist in that stratosphere. It's right. almost like being out of space. Right. The reason why Dave Chappelle is so interesting, I don't think he's a billionaire. I don't want to discuss too much of his finances, right. but everybody knows he gets his bread. Right. And so the reason why he's so interesting is because he's able to get that amount of bread but still seem like one of us. Right. And he's the exception to the rule. Mm. Kanye, I talked with him about that Trump stuff and all that stuff and yeah. this and that. He spoke about him drink chance, I believe. Yeah, okay. we talked about it when Dead mm -hmm. Prez was here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's interesting about Kanye is, it's like you said, it's hard to talk to someone, a self-made man, right. self-made from the bottom. Right. I don't even think Jay-Z, I don't think you'll take Jay-Z advice at this point. Yeah, who's gonna, who will like, tell him what to do? Like, uh, but like it's hard to trust people too when you got that kind of bread and like, it's known like, I, in I, the public. I'll never take advice from a, a marriage counselor that's never been married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Makes I mean, sense. I, right. Right. And they can give you the best advice ever. Like you know, you know, sometimes you know got the best knowledge is the drunk from the hood that's on the block. He gonna give you some drink of the, champ. The drink he champ. He gonna give you some yeah, of the right. best right. advice <laughs> ever. He just don't got his own for him himself. Right. They love for himself, but don't overlook that 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 wise man that's a drunk that's on the corner. Right. They gonna hit you with some mathematics that makes sense. Right. It just didn't make sense for his life. But right. but seeing that diamond right. Knowing that the music business and how it was back then, and seeing Dave Chappelle going or make make his 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 plot for like, like I thought we did that for De, De La Soul when De La Soul came up here, we told Tom Silverman this is the right time to do the, the thing. Right. All these old white men is you know looked at mm -hmm. as masters and even right. owning a, a thing called the master. How did you yeah, feel when you seen that uh, Dave Chappelle took that stance and Netflix took the stand that they did, and and then actually gave him back his rights or whatever it, it, it was worked well, out. Talking about um, Comedy Central, right? Comedy Central, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, it was only right they did that. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it, mm. it, it, it was his shit. Right. You know, and like, you know, you know from the way it got to me, um, through, through Kuali, was that um, the people who were there in the 90s, they're not there. You got a whole, right. whole bunch of young people up there now. Right, right. And they right. just wanted to do the right thing. Right. right. You right. know what I mean? So they, they gave him back his name, the show. Mm. They paid him some bread yeah, they, on they top of that. The name, the Dave Chappelle show, they, they owned did. The name? Now he owns it. That's yeah. crazy. But that yeah. was the whole thing. At what point they own, they own Noriega? That's why I was drunk in R.E. That's common yeah. place yeah. That's in the music business. A lot right. of artists probably don't even own their name. Right. But, but my thing, my good thing is they, they, they didn't really give a fuck about me then because they spelled it wrong. That's why I spelled it N O R E A E A G A. Instead of N O R I E A. They showed it like the real dictator. Come on. Looking for me being smart. 
Those contracts do say likeness, your likeness, and it says in perpetuity, in the universe, and it's just crazy shit. That shit don't make no sense. That's colonizer shit. That's imperialist shit. That's crazy, yeah. Uh, it's trying to own yeah. somebody's soul and own yeah, their whole yeah. life. The slavery. The sugar Hill so, Gang. So I don't got to ask y'all that this is independent. I don't got to ask that, right? Um, yeah, we had Diamond Partner. Time. You got Diamond Mind. Uh -huh. I got uh, uh, Javoti Media. We partnered with Ingrus Distribution, but we own the masses. Who's that distribution? Uh, Ingrus. Ingrus. Who that? Damn, right? That's yeah. Oz. Okay. They've been um, around for a while. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Shout out to Shams. Ingrus Universal. Okay. Okay. We own the masters. Yep. Right, right. And I had boom. How many records is on this album? What is it? Ten. Ten? Ten? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, y'all yeah. keeping it back to old. Yeah, we got um we got Skazu on it. Mm -hmm. We got uh who else? Nare all day on it, Buster Rhymes, John Forte, mm. Nico is. Right. Y'all ain't got none of them new generation, none of them new niggas on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, this album's called Gotham because it's a dedication to not just New York, but old New York. Mm. And particularly after the pandemic, New York is different right now. So it was right. like, I'm mm. glad that we got it in before the pandemic. This is about the New York I grew up. This this album was done. It was, I, I listened to Cuban Links for hours before I did mm. this album. Mm. I listened to Diamond D's catalog for hours mm. before I did this album because I wanted to. You wanted to get I in that the, zone. Yeah, I liked the way that Ray and Ghost how their voices was different. So if you listen right. to this album, you'll notice that one one verse I'm doing in one voice, another verse I'm doing another voice, just to have their different colors. Right. Um, you know, d d just how I grew up, me listening to records in the headphone on the train in the era mm. where somebody see how you dress and be like, yo, you listen to hip hop? And they mm. give you a flyer or give you a, mm. a cassette or something like that. That's what I was trying to capture with this album. Mm. God damn it, that's, that sound like, I, that sound like some good shit. Right here. <laughs> and Dean, what, what came first, rhyming or producing for you? Um, for the Gotham album or just for myself? No, no, yourself in general. The beats. Well, I was, I was a DJ first. I started off as a DJ, like most producers. You know what I mean? So I started as a DJ, and then from there I got into production, and then <clears throat> you got fed up with the MC. You're like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna rhyme on this." <laughs> Not what? Well, it, it was it was just gradual. You right. know what I mean? It, like you know, I'm hanging around Lord Finesse a lot. Um, the DJ Hutchin, DJ time, Supreme, shout out to my man Lord Finesse. Right. Um, the brand new beans when they were recording their first album. So I'm around Pool Bar. He's on fire. You know what I mean? And you know, shit just rubbed off. And I, you know, and it was a, a situation opened up. I got offered a deal, and, and, and I said, okay, I, I just took the shit. But that and, wasn't the norm back then, back. right? A producer being an MC himself and self-producing. Say it again? Be, like being an MC and producing your right. own album. That and wasn't the norm at that time. No, it wasn't. It was. I mean, people was doing it, but you know, not, not, not on, on a major label. But right. it's almost like you had, you, know to, I mean? you had to get signed as a rapper right. first, right back then. And you and, won a Grammy, right? Yeah, for the Fuji's. God damn it, make some noise for that. <laughs> Where do you keep your Grammy at? Um, well, I got the, um, I didn't get the actual statue, or, or if I got it, Patrick Moxie probably got it. Oh, Patrick. Oh, my God. But anyway, um, you know, I, I got all the plaques and shit. You know, right. I gave my mom one, and I got one. Okay. Um, they, you know, they give you, um, like, like a... Well, back in '96, got like like a like a medallion and a whole package. Mm. But um, yeah, that was for the that was for the song, the score, the Fuji, so, the yeah. title track of the score. Yeah, legendary. Uh, uh, yeah. How did how did that feel when they called you and said you won a Grammy? Nas just won a Grammy. It took him 25 yeah. years. Yo, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yo, he been partying every I mean, day since. You know, <laughs> he been nice, living drink like, caps life. It's, it's <laughs> nice to be recognized. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it it don't make or break you. But it's always nice to be appreciated. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? And you know, shouts out to Nas. You know, right. he definitely deserved that. Yeah, he deserved that. Yeah. No Have you ever cared about the Grammys? Uh, nah, I don't give a fuck about yeah, Grammy. But you know what's funny about? Yeah. Just, I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad. I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad. I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a hater. I'm gonna tell you that can't be the reason. That's a terrible reason. I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad that Nas won a Grammy. You're mad that he won. I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad that Nas won a Grammy. Because I don't give a fuck about the Grammys, and I always used to say I am proud to be in the category of artist that didn't win a Grammy, like Nas, like Bob Marley. Oh no, he left us immediately. And now I can't say Nas. He left us immediately. Yeah, Bob Marley to this day hasn't gotten any. Yeah, I don't think Bob Marley ever won a Grammy. Bob Marley. Nas was talking that same shit too. He was gone. He was gone. So Nas ain't down with the no Grammy crew. He ain't down with no Grammy crew no more. Me and you as the leaders, man. Let's go. Let's go. But um. I always think it's funny like that. I, always, I, 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 I like to, uh, you know, give the accolades uh, when, it, when it's well-deserved, as it is in Nas' case and your, your mm -hmm. case. Right. 
But I always felt like we should have had our own award show that's prestigious. Yeah, it was Just called like the Source it. Awards at one point. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, yeah, I mean, it was big at its time. Source Awards, oh, hip hop no awards, Soul Train no awards. Yeah. We we do got our own shit sometimes, but it's always corporate right. involvement. Someone gets you know involved and fucks it up. I mean, you know, shout out to my man Bad Seed. I don't know if y'all know who that is. Yeah, MC absolutely. Bad Seed. Yeah. But I, you know, he be on Instagram doing like the Grind Awards, and it'd be like Bad Seed versus like. You know, some some rapper from Brooklyn, like Bassie versus Rusty Jux. Right. You know, right. shit like that. Like, I like when artists do their own shit like that. Like, mm. they did their own, like, Brooklyn Hood version of Versus. Like, wow. okay, we now can get celebrated on that level, but let's right. do it ourselves. I like seeing shit like that. Because shit like, like when Justo did the Mixtape Awards. The Justo I like Mixtape Awards like is the that. best. I like definitely award, taking right. it in our own hands. Yeah. Right, right. Rest Speaking, in peace to Justo, by the way. Peace, Justo. Rest in peace, Justo. Yeah. Speaking of Versus, would you do a Versus against Most Def? I would. Okay. I don't think most Def would ever do any verses. Why? You think he's shook at you? No, he's not no, shook at me. Like, I was trying to start a rumor. I'm trying to start a rumor. He Sorry. just, you know, I think yeah, most don't star. like that. He don't like that sort of pageantry of it. Um, right. But I would do it. I like, I'm, I'm excited about the Rain ghosting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think me and most would be At first, I, I didn't initially like it. And then I went and I said, oh, you know what? They, they do got a lot of records separately. They have a lot. But it's just a celebration of them. But what's going yeah, to be most, win, but what's what's gonna be most fun is to see which records, who get to play what. Right, yeah, because right. that's going to be difficult. Yeah, does Raekwon get to play, does Ghost get to play Ice Cream? I think whoever yeah. does Ray album it was on, they got to play. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I would yeah. That's how it should rock. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Whoever album was, yeah. And they're going to regret how, how about you? Would you want to go against a producer in Versus? Lyman? Oh, yeah, I'll go against anybody. Okay. <laughs> Let me think Lyman of that. Lyman smoke. You against Buckwell? You and Premier. I'll go against Buck 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 Buck's family. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what makes you know. Just on some celebration yeah. shit? Yeah. That would be fly. All right, let me. That would, that would be fly. Pete Rock, you against Pete Rock. Pete Rock, That'd that would be dope, be dope too. Any, be anybody, hell. anybody from the mid '90s to right. now, right? Who, who been doing it that long? Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. On, on, right. Has to have on, a similar on, catalog. On right. Right. You know what I mean? right. Right. Yeah. I say I can think yeah. of Pete Rock. I think that's 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 dope. Mm -hmm. I think that's legendary Lodge hero. Shouts out to my Lodge 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 would be Lodge crazy. Lodge would be hell too. Lodge. Alchemist would be dope. I mean, I have no doubt. Because Lars Young Pro, yeah. let me tell you something. Lars Pro has never changed. He's been the same That's guy. That's the same nigga. The he same don't get enough guy. respect <laughs> you know, for what, he, how he, what Pro, he put man. in the game. I love Lars Pro, bro. He That's still so, comes yeah. out. How, how um, long y'all knew each other? Um, you and well, Pete. Well, Lars Pro used to come to my hood back in the days. Mm. And he was always a good dude. He's just always around. And um, so I knew him for a while. Right. I, I can't even tell you how long. Now, I correct me if I'm you wrong. Know before, I seen before you before Main Source? I knew. I think. I, I think after Main Source. Okay. I see you in yeah. Europe on the road with Large Pro, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's a we, good party. We we, right. we we go out there. We do our thing. Right, right, right. right, right. Spending forty five. That's what I'm saying. Right. right. <laughs> and you be DJing too. You taking all the money. I'm a, I'm a celebrity right. DJ. Right. I, know. I can't say I'm a <laughs> DJ. Say DJ for a while. Say I'm a DJ here, fan of Diamond D. But yeah, I come to little spots, wood tavern, little spots, do my little one two thing. Shout out to Max Pierre. Word. One of the COVID shit, huh? They just shut down. But they just opened a spot right there. Pizza spot. Pizza bar. I DJed right there a couple weeks ago. What's happening? The same people. The same people. Yeah, I just saw homie. We but just they don't got the they don't got the smoking section. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna blow it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just DJed at that pizza bar. It oh, was yeah. a good time. You, oh yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So, how, uh, um, what, so what's your relationship with Miami? Are you living out here partly? I like Miami a lot, man. Right. I mean, you know, the South is South is crazy. You, I think you've been coming right. here for a long Running time. Running around super spreading yeah. and all right, that. Right. <laughs> Miami's wild yeah. right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but I mean. The, you know, Miami got something special. Miami's right. cultural. Right. You know, with, with all the Latino people, all the Caribbean people, everybody who moved here from New York and everybody right. who moved here, right. like, Miami got a special thing going on. Even people locally who grew up here, the whole Broward scene, you know, what y'all doing with Wynwood and the whole, what you're doing, right. Art Basel and Arts. Right. Shout out to Thurston Howell and yeah, everybody who just come and relocate. Um, Miami's very special. So, yeah, I've been coming Kate down Capri here. Kate Capri was down here at one time. Kate wow. Capri was down oh, here. I remember... Uh -huh. <laughs> I used to do early. I'm gonna tell you, bouncing around, just moving around on subjects. I'm gonna tell you something that you told me that may fuck fucked up my mind. When we did the Russell Simmons episode. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about that now? Yeah, okay. you got to. <laughs> and, and mind you, that was a quarantine episode. It was, it, the, yes. it was on Zoom. Yeah. It was a quarantine episode. During I wanted to do what I my version of marching. I have a platform, I know how powerful it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't. I didn't know then. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know how yeah. powerful it is. So we wanted to do a panel. So I think we hit you. I think it was Bum B. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mark. Mark Lamar Hill. Mark Lamar Hill. And no, it was no female on there. 
And who? It was Bun B, Mark Lamont Hill. Was Mike Son on this? Mike Son and, and you. And I remember on the promo, it was one part of the thing, this, this, this part never got out. This part never got out. But when Russ actually came on, because first it was just us. Mm -hmm. But when Russ first came on, all of us smiled. Like everyone, it was just like a, a refreshing thing. But when I looked at that footage, I said, nah, that can't come out. Because how... But you said something to me, so I called you the other day. I was like, yo, I didn't even really know, after that happened. I was like, I didn't really know how much they're accusing Russ of mm -hmm. and all this. And you said something to me that I've never heard before. You said, yeah, we're male, we're male privileged. <laughs> and I yeah. said, what? <laughs> I had never heard that. Like, you know what I'm saying? The privilege, we have a certain privileges as mm -hmm. a man that we don't even, that it's not like we're blocking the door, we're right. ignoring it. It's like second nature almost. Yeah, I had never heard, had never heard of that before, um, right. uh, 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 Talib. So, yeah, yeah. So, and then I did my research, you know, I spoke to Mark, Mark Lamar after right. that. He was arguing with Rose a little bit too. Yeah, he was, I, I, I was arguing with Rose. But it was crazy I, about you, so I, yeah. I went back and watched my first drink champs that I did <laughs> the first time when I got really drunk the first right, time. Right, right. I fucked me up. Tell me you regret it. <laughs> I, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> um, but I brought Rosa up in that drink champs. Wow. And you said, wait, she's Puerto Rican? I need to meet, we need to we, we. Right. So it was bug. I was like, oh, I had mentioned Rosa the first right. time years before. It's funny that y'all started arguing. And it's but crazy. Her, the convos with her, I mean, I had a couple exchanges with her on, on Twitter, I think. Yeah. And it was mad, like, it was... Calm and no, she loved you know, it. Was, That's it was level-headed shit. It right. was level-headed shit. Yeah. My thing is, and this goes out to Sister Rosa, who I, I don't think I've ever met, and if I did, I apologize if I uh, I don't remember. But the cancel culture, because this is what made me mad, and this is what made me upset. Just by having Russell on, she said, "Drink champs hates black women." <laughs> like, yeah, that's what? the part that's crazy. That's crazy. That, okay, well, I don't know what that is. Look Japanese good. whiskey. Okay. Oh, that's Excellent. good whiskey right there. So hold on, let me finish because I don't want to just leave that out yeah. there in the atmosphere, in the universe. Right. So the thing about it is I ain't supposed to know everything that's proper. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to just take time out of your, instead of coming at somebody and dissing them. Or assuming them, something. Or assuming something. Assume something. Like assuming that we were all co right. I actually more or less didn't use the episode more for my son, Talib Kweli, because... These are my brothers who I look to for my consciousness. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when they didn't, and Lamar, even Lamar Hill didn't say nothing. He put his head down. But I would have appreciated him to say, yo, listen, I can't hit you be after here. the fact. Yeah, hit me after the fact. He went straight to Twitter. Right. He went straight to Twitter. And I had to accept it. Uh, I had to accept it because this is the, the, the day and time we live. Right, right. But he was trying to cover his ass, which he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But like I said, in this day and time, I see the comedians. They're having a rough time because they can't say certain words. Mm -hmm. They can't. And I just wanted you to uh, touch on that a, a little bit, that when you hit me with the male privilege. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, I think we all in this room uh -huh. understand. There's a bunch of dudes in this room. Yeah. Well, for, well the best, first of all, mm -hmm. like, I, I love this show. Right. The show needs a lot more women. It does. Absolutely. And you and me yeah, spoke yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, it does. It does. And that's the first thing. And that's, as yeah. guests. As yeah. guests. But, but you know that's not us. Right. We've invited them. Right. We've invited... I, so even with my show, People's of, Party, right. I found it's very easy, especially in a hip-hop space that's testosterone-driven, to fall into the habit of just booking men because it's men that run this shit. It's no, men we that, don't want to do that. Just, yeah. But I found I had to go you. above I'm, and beyond in my right own... We don't really book guests no more. The guests book us. Okay. So it's kind of like... Right, right, right. But with the females, we reach out, and females is different because they, you know, you got to deal with their management, you got to deal with their boyfriends, you got to deal with. But from day one, Queen Latifah, yeah, MC Lights, Al Fonsi, a little kid, like, Muhammad, like we, 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 we've reached out. But I, no, Lisa but I, I believe y'all because right, I. Right. I go above and beyond to reach out to women to get right. on my show to right. make it more balanced right. and that's a challenge right. it's not it's not easy but but because we have well, back to the point I was saying right. everybody in this room we understand white privilege right. we understand that if you're born white mm -hmm. it doesn't matter right whether you're rich oh, yeah. or poor, right. if you're born Boys. white, you're born with a certain amount of privilege in right. the society. Whether you know it or not, even. Right. right. So if you're born male, and that right. even goes for black men. Right. You know, I didn't know that. If you're you born said that. male, you're born with a certain amount of privilege. Certain doors open up for you in society that open up for women. The most glaring right. example is pay the pay rate. Right. Women get seventy cent to every dollar that men make. That's the most glaring example. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? But we 
Every, everyone has a specific amount of privilege. Straight white men have more privilege than anybody. Straight rich white men right. have more privilege than anybody. Right. But everybody got some sort of privilege. And you don't become a jerk by having privilege. You become a jerk if you just don't ever acknowledge it. Right. I think in those spaces, when we had them conversations, right. we sometimes fall into the male privilege, whether it's intentionally or not. Right. And I think that's I think that's what we was doing in, the, in that conversation. Right. And so when Russell came on, I don't want to get into the weeds about what, who thinks Russell did what. Right. The fact is, is that the accusations are, are out there. Right. Accusations have been made by credible individuals. Right. These are not random people. These are people who have credibility in our business. Right. The fact is that Oprah, though, pulled away from doing a documentary right. on Russell right. because she couldn't. I, I can't speak up, but she pulled away from it. Right. Right. So. So I, just, I thought he deserved the benefit of the doubt from there. Well, it's, not, it's your not, platform, I, right. and you allowed to do that. Right. No, I, I actually walked away from it. Well, I yeah. actually, I actually you made walked. A I, I said. Well, we, we, I, I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. well, I, didn't. I remember I, that episode, I wasn't even there. So I forget what my reason was. I wasn't on that episode. Because it was Zoom anyway. And I found out after the fact. And yeah. I still found myself arguing with Rosa on Twitter <laughs> about it, yeah. trying and, to defend our stance. Right. And I'm going to tell you something just because we never brought it up. Next time you see your, your, a person that's of your culture that's doing something that's culturally not appropriate, you can D, the same way we was DMing mm -hmm. and we was flipping on each other. Right. You yeah. can DM me for some good yeah. shit too, sister. Yeah. You don't gotta right, always right, right. critique like, me. Let's go to each other behind the scenes. I, I, I'm here to know? tell you that Rosa love you. Right. We had me, love me, me and Rosa had had mm. me and Rosa had heated conversations about this. Mm. And me and Rosa, that's my good friend. Mm. But we don't agree on every single thing. We had right, which is cool. and we, we check each other. Right. We had a heated conversation about it because her right. whole thing was her whole thing is at the age we at. We supposed to know better. Hey. My whole thing was, I said, you got to look at who Noriega is. Right. This is a man. If you know his hip hop hip, hip hop history, you right. know where Nori come from. Right. You know he come from right. poverty. You yes. know he come from a situation. He built himself up out of this. Right. And now this man who has been to jail, right. this man who has been through the system, is now realizing it as an older man. Right. I have an opportunity to take what I learned right. and be more positive. Yeah. So let's give the brother space to yes. grow. And That's learn. all I want. And we're gonna be progressive. Well, we can't assume that he know what we know. Yeah, I did. You know what I'm saying? I actually like. I heard the allegations, and let me just be something clear, not taking up for Russell, because if he's guilty of things that he's guilty of, then mm -hmm. I feel like he should face the consequences, right? There's no hands mm -hmm. about it. But this man that they describe, I've never met. That's right. I have never seen this man. Like, if you're going to say, and I'm not saying a crime should be forgiven or whatever, but if you bring up who I was at 18 years old, mm -hmm. I'm not who the fucking guy. I, hate, I, would, I wouldn't hang out with that guy. <laughs> right, My 43-year-old right, yeah. version right, right, ain't hanging out with the 18-year-old right. version of me. He's right. an asshole. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, he doesn't want to come home. This That's guy it. comes home to his family. So I tend not to do that to someone else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Why would I judge you on what you was, who you was at 18? And, and right. you got to realize that I'm not making... No excuses for anybody. But the culture was different back then. Mm -hmm. People would literally walk up to girls and smack them on their ass. Mm -hmm. Women would literally do that to me in the office. Mm -hmm. I'd be getting a haircut, get up, bit a woman go, bam, smack me on the ass. I didn't know I was being me too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I wouldn't have reported it. I would have got kicked up, I would have said something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. that was, it. Well, I'm not, not co-signing mm -hmm. it. But what I'm saying is that was, it was more likely you to walk in and see somebody, uh, uh, one of the CEOs, somebody's, uh, uh, their assistant sitting on their lap. That that was kind of normal back then. Not not cosigning it, right. not saying it was right, but seeing it wasn't abnormal. Right. Yeah, you know and that's the saying? thing. That's what they talk about rape culture being normalized. Right. It was so normal back right. then that we accepted it as okay. Right. And it's our job to grow right. and progress and change. And that's the thing with cancel culture. Uh, the only thing, that the thing that's bad about it is it's not giving people the chance to grow and progress. Like, like right now, sorry, like, like right now, right? I don't know if you follow Cam, but Cam got this, this 29C, right? Mm -hmm. This girl from his building, she's following him, she's stalking him. We're all laughing at that, uh -huh. right. right? We're laughing, he's filming, he's I'm running away from her. Had that been a man, that wouldn't have been funny. Right, right. Had that been the other way around, yeah. him doing that to her? I can see someone calling the police. But you know, but you know why he's filming it. But you know so why? It can't be flipped but, on and him. this is where our male privilege comes in. Right. Because women, and this is something I've learned as I, I grow older. When that happens to women, right. they be getting murked. Right. Like when, when dudes be stalking with, like women, when right. dudes, you know, when, when women get catcalled and dudes be, they get re rejected, yeah. dude, right. women be getting violently assaulted. And that's what it is. Like right. women go through that so much. Right. 
that that bullshit that happened in Harlem right. not too long that ago. shit in Harlem you right. know what I'm saying the, the oh. community stood up in what, that instance what happened in a liquor store yeah oh I didn't see I see the after effect I see yeah. it but what happened I, um, some dude tried to holler at him she's like nah you know I'm good and then right. when she left niggas beat her up yeah Word. Word. yeah so Suck women be shit. going through that for so long that <laughs> with men like and we've been social like I, I just went through some shit recently with somebody saying some shit about what happened with me when I went back to the situation I'm like if I had did that to a woman, that would have been rape, what this woman did to me. You know what I'm But as a, when it happened when I was like in my early 20s in my career, we looked at it as some fly shit. So what happened? happened to oh, me. a chick took advantage yeah, of you? Yeah, she gave, just, gave I, some I didn't look at it like that at that took, time. Right. She gave some ecstasy? She didn't give me no ecstasy, but just the way in which she was coming at me mm. and the way in which she was like pressed mm. about the shit where I, I found myself hiding from this woman. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, used, I told my friends I want some funny shit. But 20, 20 years later, I'm like, well, nah, that was sexual harassment. All right. You know what I'm saying? All right. But I thought it was fly. Because right. I never had that cat calling. I never had that attention. I never had right. until I became a rapper. All right. You know what I'm saying? All right. But we're like, we got to figure, like, it's obviously, a deep conversation, by I think way. all of us know for a fact that rape culture, the, everything that we're talking about, none of us co sign. Mm -hmm. None of us co sign. I think where it starts to get murky is the cancel culture side of it, mm -hmm. where it just, every, the, 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 Society's become judge and jury. Boom. Well, how do you throw out the baby with the bathwater? How do you throw out everyone? And I'm not even going to start naming names because I don't want nobody to get canceled. But, but let me you just say, no, 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 we're here for that because yeah. we couldn't handle it like that because we was on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Zoom could, sick could get caught out. You would get cut off when you're trying to, this is not it. We're here for this right. time. We're here to have this well, great Okay, so let's, let's, let's break it down. Since okay. you said we're here to have Let me just it. ask you something. Let me just tell you something. What I just noticed. They're trying to go and take Russell's shit off of all these, these like mm -hmm. his name attached to. Harvey is. You can still watch a Miramax film. Of course. You can watch still watch his name. Yeah. Still watch his shit. Like, his you, name. You, you can watch like the man, but you can't destroy the legacy. Yeah. Yo, listen, listen his, his name too. still pops up, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, the other the day, I, company. The other day right, my Netflix yeah. wasn't working. My, 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 my Prime Video wasn't working. My Hulu wasn't working. So I went back to cable. And I watched a regular cable until the shit was. And I'm just randomly. Just throwing through movies and still seeing his name pop up on official cable and, companies. And you're not wrong, still. but I, I think that the, the thing we have to do as men is realize that because we teach our children this, we mm. teach our children, well, just because he's doing it doesn't mean it's okay for you. Right. Right. So as men, we have right. to be like, okay, yeah, Harvey Weinstein exists and Jeffrey Epstein exists, but just because they exist, we can't use what about ism. We can't say right. what about this. Right. We have to, right. we have to, right. we have to own our shit. So I think. You came from a place where you didn't understand the ramifications. No, I did not. But now that you do, I still you know don't actually understand fully mm -hmm. because I'm looking at people reposting Russell Simmons. That's a woman. But I'm looking thing. at him being Bali doing right. fucking yoga. Oh, you know, Russell went to women. Bali and said, "Not me." With the women. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, but even the women in proximity he has don't mean, don't mean he, has, he didn't do it. He has not you know been, but he's not been, he's not been charged. But let me ask you this. Yeah. Just like you had to ask me about it, right. now that you know, with knowledge comes responsibility. Right. You couldn't have me on the show without asking me. Right. So now that you know, <laughs> right. if Russell was sitting in his chair, you right. know you'd be asking him. I have to. You have to. You know what I would do? This would be my first time I had somebody ghost write my video, my <laughs> interview. I would actually yeah. go let Rosa give me all the questions. Yes. Yeah. You give me the questions. Well, that's you what happened in that, in that instance when he joined the Zoom, right. that should have been asked. But that, and, that's, and that's where I was going. Okay. The, you didn't do it because you didn't know. Well, I right. didn't. But had you known, the way for us to do it is, we can't we can't say that Russell Simmons is not worthy to be in the conversation. Right. Right. But if he is in the conversation, well, then we got to deal with it. The same right. way that you asked Karis One about right. Africa been by. Right. 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 Like we're not we're not going to not have Karis One. And that's why. But we are going to ask the hard. You know question. what it was? I didn't realize that I'm also a journalist too. Mm -hmm. That I wasn't being a journalist. I was being a Black Lives Matter. I was being a right. black person yeah. instead right. of being right. a journalist. Yeah. And I see Mark. <laughs> hey, go Because Mark is a journalist for Mark. Mark, like, Mark, Mark he turned on Mark the journalist. Mark immediately hat. after. He was like, yo, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. As soon as we hung up, I, I had the tweet. They was like, Mark Lamar said he's not with his big chat. I'm like, what the fuck? And I, I, right. I had to deal with it. But again, sisters, our culture, people that really, like, you really know I love this culture. You right. really know that. You really know I'm coming from a place of almost stupidity if I culturally don't be appropriate sometimes. I'm coming from a place of stupidity, not a straight stupidity. Right. You don't, you shouldn't chastise me for every stupid move or for every move that you think. Sometimes you really need to just hit somebody and say, yo, listen, bro, you might not want to do that. 
boom, 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 and then you take it from there. I had, I had little Kim on my show. Okay. And she talked about being a teenager when she dropped that album cover. Mm -hmm. The hardcore and how niggas in jail loved it and everything. Right. And she said she thought she was just having fun being a young right. lady. And then C. Dolores Tucker and them came and they were steamrolling her CDs. And she right. said something interesting. She said, I was just a child. Right. Why didn't this older black lady hit, pull me to the side and give me some life advice? I didn't know what I was doing. But let me Why ask, did they attack me immediately? Doesn't right. that even, it, it, the way you just said it right now, maybe even creepier though, that that cover that she was a child. Mm -hmm. Right, like yeah. whoever's the imagery, Six, whoever's in charge of that creation, it was a different culture. Was a culture. But I'm saying, like, th now that we're older, now the way you're Yo, saying, look, like, damn, when she's a child, I'm, I'm, I got a daughter. Like, she, you know, know. she said, Again, I didn't know. I ain't right, defending right. it, but that was the culture back then. No, it was no, highly yeah. sexual shit going on. Like the people were openly talking about eating pussy and sucking dick and and all this. This was, this was what hip hop was delivering, and it was a part of it. Like watching this shit go down, this super sexist shit going down. It was, we had, you guys in Miami, you had two live crews. <laughs> but what the fuck? Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think you could attack the lyrics per Luke, se. You think Luke, now that Luke got daughters, you think he was thinking of that now? But, like, wait, he but you have to be careful. We can't attack the freedom of speech either and, and, and freedom of, to be creative. I don't know. But to me, there's a fine line a that starts to be. It's a fine line. I, let me just say, because uh -huh. Luke ended up running for office and Luke ended up doing positive thing. Let yeah. me just say. Imagine it doesn't matter how gangster you back are. Back then. It doesn't matter how sexual you Luke are. Luke had two girls right. sucking. Uh, right. like, suck it doesn't matter. Right. Right. And, and Jay Z's lap. What I will say is, he's like the mayor or some right. shit. Is no matter <laughs> what ratchet, <laughs> what, no matter what ratchet, <laughs> ratchet shit you went to as a rapper. Luke is the only one who came on the show and said you right. can't smoke. If we don't even need smoking for the Luke. You had pieces on camera. You end up being a conscious, I'm sorry, conscious rapper. No matter what. I said if you get to a certain, you go, you play. If rap is a video game. And you get to the boss, you get to the top. Oh. Dude, if you if you survive all the shit of rap, mm. you either become, even if you're not conscious of your lyrics, you right. become a conscious individual. Yes. Every gangster rapper, uh, you know, from yeah. Too Short right. to Nori, right. you know what I'm saying? Everybody right. turns a new, if you survive this shit, yeah. right. you'd be you're like, right. okay. Scarface, you're right. Yeah, man. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I think you make some noise for that. Yeah. 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 By the way, <laughs> this is a good conversation because. I actually don't know. Which we may not be qualified for this conversation. We may not be qualified <laughs> to be qualified. But well, we need to have a woman in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Yeah, in, yeah. It, in it, but, um, and, that, and that's what's interesting is when I, I, I look at Russell Simmons' um, thing and I see that women support him. Mm -hmm. so Some like, do. So like, that, that's why it's weird to me. It's like I said, it's one of those subjects where it's, it's just in the air. I think it's about personal responsibility. Right. There's some women who like Russell didn't do nothing wrong. There's right. some, some women that's, that's like he's a rapist. But mm. it's about, we can't judge how we gonna behave on how others. We had to look, mm. you know, we have, Russell is Russell Simmons. That's right. Russell Rush. Right. Like we can't erase what he did in hip hop, right. but you know, he's just, I think because of what he did in hip hop, because of what he's done for the community, he deserves to have his voice heard. Right. What, now what he says with his voice, We'll have to judge. And I'm going to tell oh. people like this, that I never said this story. Hopefully, I think I never said this story. But those De women deserve that. They've always heard Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not publicly. When that Hot 97 shootout happened, mm. and they banned us. They mm. banned us immediately. They pulled every record from Capone and Noriega to Noriega mm. to Thugged Out to The Firm. Mm. Whatever record I was on, they, they, they pulled it. They pulled it. Mm. You know who got me to get back on the radio? Who? It was Russell Simmons. Russell. Wow. He was there for me the time that I needed him. Right. I got to say, the hardest conscious rapper out now is Capone. Right, right. That's all. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, let me finish. We can get back to that. Um, <laughs> and when it came time for me to, to show back that favor, I stood with the woman. Mm. I want to mm. make that clear. Mm. I stood with the woman because I... Well, I think I don't think I don't think I, I don't think it's mutual ex exclusive. I think okay. you could show solidarity for women right. and still respect Russell's contributions right. to your life right. and to this culture. I tried to, but when the comments was so real, when they was and then and what they were doing was I felt bad for our partners because they were blaming it on <laughs> um, uh, the title and and Puff. They was like, look at this Puff and, and, and Jay Z puts Russell Simmons on. Let me get the get that, puts Russell Simmons on Dreamcast. I was right. like, they ain't even got nothing. Do it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, so it's crazy, and I'm, I, we're we're we're, re, uh, we're doing hip hop X, FX uncovered with our big U, Bimmy, right? Uh, I did that too. This and is, he said yeah, the dope. only part that they hated is that the, the studio made him take Russell Simmons out. Mm. He said, but we, we they let us interview murderers. That's <laughs> crazy. Us, that's crazy. That's crazy. He said, look that's at crazy. our records. They yeah, let, yeah, that's that's. Uh, 
This is crazy. Yeah, that's some other shit right there. <laughs> that's some other shit. That's, yeah. other shit. that's, that's like that Dave Chappelle joke of sticks and stones where he's like, well, I'm not a nigger either. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Is that yeah. shit? That's that. That's that. This is a deep conversation, man. This is deep. <laughs> this is deep, man. I got. I ain't even looking at my notes. Holy moly, guacamole. Hold on. Let me go. Let me. <laughs> no, but wait. But tell him, you said you go above and beyond to, to book more female guests. Yeah, it's What it's is it that you're doing? Give us an example. I, I, shout out to my team. Because Do you have I, MC Light? We haven't had light on, but okay. we've had we've had we've had a lot of female guests. We had mm-hmm. last week we had Dasha Polanco. Next week is Sonny Anderson. Mm-hmm. Um, Sonny told said to say what's up as well. I know that that's shit. My that's my sister. That's one of my right. favorite people in the world. Yeah, um, we there was an argument on the squad right. because they kept booking really good guests. We had Busted and DMX and this and that. And I'm like, yo, I gave him a list of women to book. I'm like, make sure you get. I gave him a list of ten women. I said, get your bad and average needs to be three hundred. Book three of these women, and then months went by. We get in dope guests, but they ain't get none of them women. Right. And I'm like, yo, if I'm not pushing to get right. women, we 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 all as a team, our default right. is to just be comfortable with the with the male talk, right. and, you know. And it's like, we I think we need to balance, and I think people like us who have the platforms, we gotta fight for it. Um, yeah, we we just gotta fight for it. Right. And shout right. out to your co-host as well, Jasmine. Shout out to Jasmine Lee, yeah. absolutely. Now, now you worked on the low end theory with Tribe Called Crest. Yeah, yeah, on the song Show Business. I rhymed on that song. Okay, you rhymed on it and yeah, produced yeah. the beat? No, I didn't oh, produce it. Skeff Anselm did that. Right, right. Skeff oh, okay. on the board. You should tell the story about how you got on that record. Okay, yeah, yeah let's yeah. go. All right, so this, this this is crazy, right? I went down I went down to the um to the session to play some beats for Tip. For Tip? I, yeah, yeah. I, you know, just, just to, yeah, y'all want any champagne? I feel bad not over y'all. Uh, no, nah, but you want some of this, this, some of this whiskey? I want you to somebody to drink this one. I have a little bit. I'm going to be honest, Tyler. <laughs> I am not I'll a try, whiskey I'll try guy. Some. I like whiskey. Oh, I'm just mixing too oh, much, but I'll, I'll try some. some. Wait, 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 wait. Where's my man? Where's my man? Mr. Lee. You said he's a whiskey. Hey. Oh, who's the whiskey drinker? The dude who got me the Jameson. Yeah, Mr. Lee. So show business, right? Okay, um, go ahead. ahead. Trial Court Quest. So I, I go down to Battery Studios, uh-huh. and um, I'm, I'm trying to play tips and joints. Um... Oh, so I'm drinking champagne. Yeah, you got it. Come on, man. Yeah, so I'm just playing black gold, oh, baby. Black gold. Okay, okay, on, okay I didn't know that. That so changes. That changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salud. This is what Jay Z just sold, baby. Black gold, baby. Mm-hmm. So I'm playing Tip some beats. Um, at this point, Tip knew I had a deal for the Stunts, Blunts, and Hip Hop album. Mm-hmm. We would see each other Classic up at Jack- yeah, we would right. see each other up, up at Jazzy J Studio up in the Bronx. The so anyway, I'm down there playing beats for him. And um, Lord Jamon, Sadat X, they show up. Mm. They do they they do their verses, right? Mm. Well, the first time they laid their verse, Poobah was there. Right. I wasn't there the first time, but anyway, the, um, what happened was Poobah, his verse. You know, he was talking about gays and you know just keeping it a buck. You know, he's a five percenter, so right. you already right. know their stance. Right. So Jive was like, all right, listen, we love Poobah. You know, ask him to write a new verse. And Poobah was like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're dead on that. So he didn't want to write a new verse. Poobah was on a lecture. They was on a lecture at that time? He was on a lecture. Okay. But, but this is this is on um, cute, this is on Tri Quest album. Uh, I know, is, I know what yeah. you're saying, Jive is saying oh, yeah, that. Jive. Yeah, Jive. So um, so when I showed up to play play Tim some beats, some beats, he was like, yo, you wanna jump on this song? All right. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know what All I mean? Right. So that like me being on that on that album kind of mm-hmm. set up my album. Right. You know, because um, the low end theory came out maybe a few months before Stunts, Bloods, and Hip Hop. Right. You know what I mean? But shit, how many MCs rhymed on the Tribe Bible? Right, right. You know what I mean? I so, did. I did. I did. Yeah, <laughs> shit. Word yeah. up. And it's, only a, it's only a handful of us. That's right. 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 And we all exactly. right here at this table. Yeah. That's Yo, crazy. You know what's crazy? I watched the documentary the other day and I cried like I never saw it again. <coughs> the, the, the Tribe Doc? The Tribe Doc. It's because really good. When I hit, saw him and Q-Tip argue, mm. I actually called Capone. I didn't tell him why I was calling him. I was like, yo, you know, you know, I just want you to know I love you, bro. <laughs> right. And he was like, huh? Because <laughs> like, it's just weird. I was like, oh, right. I just love you. Because I related to Q-Tip and Fife. Right. 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 They both was, was making sense. Separately. I was, yeah, right. I was both of them at one right. point. I was like, oh, shit, he's right. But then the other one would say something. I was like... How is he right, 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 right. I'm like, yo. That's real brotherhood that's shit. Right real there. That's shit. real brother so shit. So I looked and I was like, wow. And, and it's crazy. Because. Um, real life shit. Yeah. I, 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 think the, I think the most slept on tool in the hip hop is the hip hop documentary. Mm-hmm. Like, since Rhyme and Reason. 
Right. Ron uh, Reason's ill. Ron I, watched, Reason. I watched Ron Reason twice a year just to make sure my mom right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, uh, hey, you better slow down over there. <laughs> you better slow down over there, man. You know what I'm saying? They ain't helping me drink the champagne, so, you know, you got all of the brothers helping you, bro, you know? Right. But um, I think that's the most slept on. Oh, the hip hop documentary. Like, I would love to see a black star. I would want a, I black, show, I'm a, show, a black star documentary this, more than I want a black star album. After and this, I want a black star okay, album. Okay, I've never made a film before in my life. Uh -huh. But after we do this, I'm going to show y'all mm. the 10 minute rough of the black star documentary that I've been working on for the oh, last wow. two years. Wow. Last two years? Last two years. Okay, wow. You know what I'm saying? Some of that shit's been filmed on my iPhone. But wow. so uh, let's get it in. That's going to be great. You know what yeah. I'm Document First, the documentary is my favorite style of film. Because mm -hmm. I feel like. I'm being entertained and learning something at the same time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that that is it. I'm into that. Yeah, I was on um, the Tribe album because I went to the Afropunk. Q-Tip was in Brooklyn to see Ice Cube perform. He was performing at Afropunk a couple blocks from where this I stayed legendary. at. This yeah, that is, sounds You see how just legendary he just said that? <laughs> <laughs> And mm -hmm. Q-Tip and me had decided we were going to work on a record. We've been talking about the song. You know how Tip is. Right. Talking about a record for two years. Right. I'm trying to get this record. Mm -hmm. Fife passed away. Uh, and so in my mind, I'm, I'm like, fuck that record. Right. I'm never asking for that record again. Like, if I hit, if I hit bro, it's just to on some just what's up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because like right. the friendships and the, and the brotherhood is more important than us right. getting a studio. Right. And when I seen him, it was the first time I seen him since Five Pass. Wow. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, yo, what happened to that song? We gonna do the song? I was like, hey, bro, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. we could do the song, but. Right. He invited me over to crib. When I went over to crib, it's him and Jerobi there, and they listening to songs him and Fife did that nobody had heard. Wow. And they they listening. Tip is mixing records. I'm like, he's like, yeah, I'm dropping a Tropical Quest album. Oof. And wow. he, and I I was like, yo, would you mind if oh, I just came? Are you on the last through? album? I'm on the last oh. album. I just came to his house every day to watch him work on this. That was an album. That was an on, I gotta brag too. You on the Beach Rock <laughs> Life? Beach Rock Life. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. Just cool, cool. give me. Yeah, all right, cool. Just give me that shit. Uh, but yeah, like, man, it's I one of my proudest And they moves. paid me. I was like, yeah. you get paid? I was like, I don't, I'm not supposed to charge fucking this. Like, right. this is his job. So that was a violated time, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But that was a good move when you was, because that was, Beats Rhymes of Life is is a is an underrated tribe album. Right. But the connection, the Queens connection, and the right. connection they made between the Nori side of Queens, the right. CNN side of right. Queens, and the Tribe Called Quest side of Queens right. was very important for the culture at <laughs> that time. Because it wasn't until later, I'm going to tell you something, when Fife first heard, Nori know this, and Nori know that, and Nori know Jack, and Nori, he didn't really feel me at first. <laughs> he was just like, yo, you kind of jacked my whole yeah, shit. Yeah, Fife's like, Fife competitive. <laughs> yeah, he's very competitive. Yeah. So, yo, and the other connection to that album is the guy who created our logo, Scam, who wow. did that album cover. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah. On the one I'm on? Or the, or Beach Rhyme and Life. Beach oh, Rhyme okay. Life. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Wait, is he on Beach Rhyme and Life or Love Movement? He's on Love Movement. I think Love Movement. He's on Love Movement. Now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Beach Rhyme and Life. Love Movement. Love Movement. Love Movement, yeah. That was just, 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 white, just white album cover. Yeah, yeah that's movement. Love Movement, yep. Yeah. When, 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 when you watch a documentary like that, Diamond D, and all the relationships and, and ups and downs. Did you see, like, cause I'm gonna tell you something that's make, gonna make me sound very, very, very naive. I didn't really see Fife look that sick. Like I saw him, did you, did you notice that in real life? Nah, like whenever I saw Fife, I never really saw him sick. Right, yeah. Was you, you, like, was you I, living no. in Atlanta the same time he was there? Um, yeah, I saw him down, I was seeing him really? down there. But you know, you don't, like when you sick, you don't come outside. So you right. know, if he's right. outside, you know, he's, he's Fife. Right. right. But you know, most people who are sick, on that level, when they sick, they stay indoors. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to come around and people treat you like, 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 like right. a pity case. Right. And, and all Cause, that. Because I, I didn't see the same thing with Pun. Like right. People said there were signs. Only thing I seen a sign with Pun was Maybe one he got thing. bigger. Uh, but not, not I, that didn't even make me a sign. I didn't even notice. Like, okay. Because he was just, I just always met him as a big guy. Right, right. <laughs> um, one of the signs I did notice was back from TV video shoot. I remember me talking and we're just kicking it. And he just went into sleep and he just started snoring. Yeah. Oh, so wow. I thought my story was trash. Right. Like I didn't know, like I, didn't, like, I was like, really? Like, damn, like, I stepped my game up. He like, disrespected like, the put, shit out of you. I put, I put the guy out of sleep. Right, right, right. The man fell asleep on me. And it wasn't until later on when it was like, yo, that's that's that um narcolepsia. Narcolepsia. Thing. Yeah. But I didn't know. Like, I mean, even down to the funeral, you know, they gave everybody like a certain amount of time to go to the casket. And right. I sat there. And I, I sat down, and I, right. I, I guess I got in a praying stance. I, I don't even know how I got there, but 
And I kept crying, and I remember the people from TS like, yo, he's in a better place. I was like, how's he in a better place? It's like, he's not suffering. I'm like, suffering? They're like, yeah, no, you ain't no. And I didn't see Pun suffer. Is that me being naive? Or you just didn't see it. Or, yeah, okay. No, you just okay. Like, probably wasn't around him like that either. Right, right. right. Yeah, no, and maybe no. he didn't show that side of himself to you. Right. right. It's like right. what he said. If you if he felt bad, he probably didn't come out. Right. And you know. saw him when he right. felt better. Yeah. Right. Now, what, what, what's up with Lord Finesse? Lord Finesse, yeah. oh man, that's my brother. Right. Um, Finesse, he just put out an album. Um, he just remixed um, a bunch of Motown records. Wow. Um, and that, that, that that's incredible. Um, Finesse, he's also, he, 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 he's out there on the West Coast. He, you know, he running around with, with, with your man Russell Peters. Oh, that's right, that's, oh, right, that's right, that's right, that's right. You know, so, you know, he, you know, he do his thing, you know, he's still DJing. I'm right. trying to get Finesse to make another MC album. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. That mm-hmm. Finesse you know, like I, I think that, you know, that, that would be yeah. tough, you know. You, you know what I just found out the other day? Uh, Cameron literally told me this yesterday. <clears throat> he said, you could go to the label right now and get hit him with that, yo, Nobody wants to be a master and own a master at this point, right? So let's negotiate to get our masters back, to get our back. He said, if they say no, it's a it's a legal law that you can go in and do your old. He said, album. Eight, no, he said eight year statute limitation on that. Did you have yeah. you ever heard of this? To do your album over, you could do yeah, your yeah. whole album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And put it out as the same. That's the shit. first I ever heard Hannibal of. Hannibal Buress did that. The comedian? comedian? Yeah, he did a, He did that. He had an album that he sold the rights to early in his career. Then he blew up and he went back to the dude. He said, listen, I got this amount of money. Give me the rights to my album back. The dude was like, nah, that's too valuable. So he just went and did the whole set over. <laughs> recorded it over at a comedy club. Joke for joke. And put it out himself. Damn for Hannibal Harris, man. <laughs> This was after this was after his arrest. Yeah. You know, listen, we was hanging with him and this is how I know. Oh, it was your fault. No, yeah. it was not. <laughs> no, no, hey, we just saw him at the bar. We just saw Took him at the, the bar. Picture. He, he was got arrested right after. He that. was already drinking, but I could see how he was drinking to the killer. I said he's gonna be fin there. Yeah, he, oh he's getting but, arrested tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I kinda nah, knew he, it. He 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 uh, is sober since then. Really? You don't no. drink no more. Since that, that no, no, no. we like, right? like, like drunk Hannibal, bro. We yeah. like, that is, that is a great guy. When he's drunk, oh my God, he's good. Right. Fun to well, hang let me, out let me, with. Let me qualify, because he did say this to me. Because okay. I said, you sober now? He said, listen, I just don't drink. Mm. <laughs> so. Oh, he does. He oh, does. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's, that, that's, that's real. That's real. Holy moly, guacamole. Yo, no, no, I ask you, no. Uh-huh. How long you had your studio in Midtown, Manhattan? Uh, I, like, I came there like once s- or twice. Seven, eight years. Mm. And that shit, that, that was like my best, worst investment. This is a 25 life shit? No, nah, this, this is mine. It's all thugged out. All yeah, mine. Yeah, nice. Like nice it's nice location. Lab. Yeah, I had the best location. We didn't have the best equipment. We didn't have the best <laughs> anything else. Just the best location. And just a <laughs> futon. Uh, and that we had a futon. <laughs> but Mariah Carey was there. What I noticed was back then was people didn't want to come see me in Queens because they just thought that... Whatever part of Queens he's from, it gotta be bad. <laughs> which, which, was, which, was not, which was not right. Which was not, not the truth. Then when I went, I had a, a one in Jersey. I had a studio in Jersey. Uh, people didn't want to travel. They felt like Jersey was out of town. I, and I had my uh, joint I was in Weehawken, which was like the next town. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. know, but no one, no one could right convince over the but when I got the hood lab, it was on 32nd and Madison, between 31st and 32nd and Madison. It was the Everybody perfect location. Here. Everyone from Mariah Carey to Diamond D to Big Ticket to, uh, uh, to EFN to everybody would go because their hotels is 10 minutes away. Right. Everyone right. said. So That's it was, why the rent is high over it, there. It was so, yeah, exactly. It was so. Now you that, was our hotel. We stayed in yeah, 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 yeah. the Listen, <laughs> it was dope because um, at the time, you know, they didn't look at me as a person that's going to send an invoice. So I ne- if I were to put Nori Studios, like because you know I had to send invoices for people bu- booking sessions. Like hey, I literally man, paid myself to record my own album at my own studio. Right. But they wouldn't give me the money like Homeboy Exchange. I had to literally make a studio session, log in, you know what I'm saying, and then present Def Jam with a, with a joint. So that's yeah. the reason why we called it on the, the, books. the Hood Lab instead of like Nori Studio. But right, yeah, right, it right. was a great investment. I should have actually made it a real studio where, you know, other people could rent it out. Because if you didn't know me, you wouldn't rent this shit out. <laughs> like, you know, like, like, listen to me. Like, I, yeah, uh, what was, what's her that. name? Evie Queen? Uh, the reggaeton artist, Evie Queen? So she came to record. 
<laughs> came to be called. And we were like foul niggas. Like, we were foul niggas. Let's just, just be clear. Our maid was fired indefinitely forever. Right? I'm talking about we didn't mop. We didn't do none of that. And Evie Green. That shit was hella dirty. But it was, it was a vibe, though. You would go there and make five, right. six records because we had a vibe. But we didn't really clean. We cleaned once, maybe two, twice right. a month. So it, it, yeah, I mean, it just had to vibe. I, I was trying to make D&D. &D. Right, right. We made D&D, but... With less equipment. With less equipment, yes, <laughs> yes. Like, we would have the NPC with the NPC box on it. Right. Like, the, 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 they came in, like, you know, usually you know, somebody will buy a table. No. We right. just kept the box that came yeah. on the NPC. And, and why not? So, uh, so I'll get back to this story. Evie Queen is starting to record, and in the room that she recorded in, we had carpet. But she walks out of the room that we recorded in and without her shoes on, I was like, no! Please don't put your shoes back on! We got mice! We got, like, we got, we got little critters here! We got shit like, I don't want them to just jump on your foot. She was like, what might be done from the ghetto? I was like, this might be worse than the ghetto, bro. Like, like for real. There might be heroin things on the floor. You gotta, you gotta be good. Mice on Madison. Yeah, but my, your own Madison. So each year, the, the rent got higher and higher, but it, it, it was dope for, um, for me to learn, learn, yeah, yeah, to learn this okay. experience. So, what, what's, what's your favorite part of uh, hip, hip hop? Is it is it making the record, performing the record, everything, everything? everything. But as a producer, right. cre creating something out of nothing, right? You know what right. I mean? That's 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 the dopest feeling for me. Mm -hmm. What about you? The fact that black people, marginalized people, people who come from nothing, could take art and create a megaphone. Right. Mm. To to broadcast what we experience globally. Right. I think it's fly. Yeah, I I, I like that too. Yeah, I, I like I, how you worded that. I like I, I like that. <laughs> you, 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 you know, you know any better than that. You know, I don't know you you know this era. I remember we used to have to wait for our albums to come out in in England. Like they would literally come out two months later. Mm -hmm. yeah, the UK version. Yeah, and every yeah. the UK version. Right, and now the, the fact artists. that you can just yeah. make an album and that shit could be in Japan the same day. It's in forty projects and it could oh. be in same day. It's in Brooklyn. Get them, it hit can them be in, agents up. Yeah, it could be in o o Osaka <laughs> right. and all that. I think that. Did, did you think? What do y'all think about streaming though? Man, I've been having this conversation it's, all. It's a complex month. one. Yeah. Really? Yeah, man. Because. Right. <laughs> People, yeah, man, like street, like because this NFT shit is popping off right now. NFT, that right? That shit is yeah. ill. That shit's popping off like right now. Like we can sell a picture of us right now off a picture of us, and that could be worth six dollars. Yeah, yeah. If, we get, if right. we get with the right people, right. get with the right team, right. we could sell it and become millionaires, right. possibly. Right. And get the royalties as it gets resold. Yeah. Which so is now a different you have thing. a situation where streaming was always un unfair. The price point is unfair, but. If you create something, you get to create the price right. point, just like right, any right, business. Right. But the thing that makes it the most unfair is that we don't get to see. With Apple, we get to see. But with Tidal, Spotify, or something, we don't, we don't get to see. Netflix, you think you get to see with, with Apple. You think you get but to But you see. really don't, right? Right, right? We don't get to see the whole shit. So it's right. like they're telling us, look, this is your percentage, but they're not telling us what they're making. Right. They're not telling us, you know, and that's the whole problem with it, is that it's not transparent. We we making we making pieces of a penny for each stream. It's terrible. You saw that joke. A million uh, streams like what? On, on the I did. I'm I'm that joke was hilarious. Grand, yeah. like but that. the problem yeah. is, is that even niggas monthly. You have to make right. a decision as a as a businessman or and a creator. Are you a populist who wants the people to hear whatever you got to hear, or are you only in it for your bread and you don't care if a small elite group of people hear it? Right. Because if you're a populist, then you're gonna work within the system. 90% of music consumers are getting their shit from Spotify. Right. So if you're a populist, you want your shit on Spotify. You want people to hear it. How, they not go, they, they not, you know what I'm saying? Right. But if you just, if, if that's not important to you, well, then you could just make your shit exclusive and only a certain people, you know, Rock Marciano, certain people, certain artists have figured it mm -hmm. out. Right. They have made it to where as Nipsey figured it out. Yeah. You know, you could follow their example, but that's where the conflict is for artists right now. It's like, do you sell your soul so that the masses can hear your shit? Or do you keep it more to your, more exclusive? Mm -hmm. Or finding that balance. Or find a balance. Where you utilize what's there now, but you're always working towards getting away from that. Yeah. Like a strange music where they found strange that the physical a great example. side, they, they've been able to sell yeah. physical like, like no other label has today. Yeah. To whereas Tech 9 is number three on the Forbes list in terms right. of touring income. 
Right. But then pandemics hit, and that's the type yeah. of things that, that affect. So uh, speaking of that, have that affected your, your, your bag, like um, as far as uh, not being able to do shows? <clears throat> has that been uh, affected for you? Because I know, like, big overseas, like, big overseas. I mean, for bags. me, it annihilated my business. Wow. Because my entire business model was based around touring. Okay. Um, I'm very. I just stopped having my shit based around touring a year ago. A, mm. like two, a year right, and a half right ago. on time, right? Yeah, right on time. So I'm very blessed that I found certain situations and I, I figured some shit out. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Like, to whereas I could still. I just. A good opportunity for me to plug my book. Mm. I had a book deal. I wrote my book. I've been trying to get the book out, but when the pandemic hit, I focused on that. I was like, right. okay, right. let me focus on getting right. the book. It's a book is called Vibrate Higher. Um, vibrate higher. Yep. I got my copy. You got your copy. Yeah. It's out already. There. It's out. Right. It's, 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 it's um, getting rave reviews. It's it's my my autobiography mixed in with social commentary and the history of the hip hop I was listening to at the time. Wow, wow. Yeah. Let's make some noise for that. Goddamn. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I've been, you know, but it's it's, it's been very. Um, people don't like to hear artists or celebrities complain, right? Because we chose this. You know what I'm All saying? Right. But. It's been very hard to to figure it out, but I've been blessed to be able to pivot in a way right. that. Now, Diamond, you worked with Forty Five King mm. back in the day, Legend. right? Right. How how was that? Shout I never got I, I never King. got to work with him. As, some, as a producer, like I, I always kind of admired it. I never got a chance. How how was that? How was the experience with you? Oh, with the Forty Five King? Yeah. Um, yo, like I I was a fan, like you know. He he from the Bronx, right. but I, at that time I didn't know. You know what right. I mean? But um, shouts out to Mark. You know, Mark is the one. Um, in the early '90s, Russell Simmons had a thing called RPM, Rush Producers Management. Mm. Mm. Easy Mo B was over there. Um, it was a few a few other producers was over there. A lot professor was over there, mm. and um, you know, Forty Five King. He made a phone call and he got me. A, he set up a meeting with me over there. This is when Francesca Spiro was over there. Wow, wow, and um. They wound up signing me, so you know he had a big a big hand like in my early production career. Him, and um, shouts out to my man DJ Jazzy J. Of course, he's the one who like taught me the wow. foundations of production. Wow. Oh, you yeah, want to do a shot? Do a shot. Yeah. I'll do a shot. I'll do a shot. How about Showbiz and AG? How was it working with them? Who? Showbiz and AG. Oh, show, yeah, come on, you know we be know show, we grew up with each other. Yeah. So you know it's just family. We need them up here too. That was a tough album. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Cool. You made that whole album? Oh nah, nah. Oh, I, okay. I, I co-produced. Um, okay. Can I get a soul clap? Oh. Ooh. Me and Showbiz, we we both did that joint. Okay, okay. So that was like that was like one of their first big joints. Mm -hmm. Then they went on to do other great things. Right. You know what did, I mean? Did you think the uh, like uh, hip hop and, and how pure it was? You think that now, um, or, uh, that we would have an artist like Cardi B? Like doing like I think she did a hundred million the other day, or she's the first bro, some crazy. I mean, she's the first female artist. Shouts like, out to Cardi B and yeah, from the um, Bronx. But it's like it's it's dope. It's dope. I, I, but I, back then, I personally I love Cardi you know, B. But, back then, but it's it so just, different it, it from which back then you already know. Knowing uh -huh. like in the nineties, it was yeah. just lyricism was like really taken seriously. Right. Everybody got their shots ready. You know what I mean, you got yeah. your shot, Tyler. Yeah. I'm gonna do a shot of what I already got. <laughs> okay. Cool. 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 Very smart. You, you, you learned from Drink Chance lesson? I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Salud, yo, listen, we don't know if y'all know, but this is about, you know, in, in, this, in this business, it's about giving the people these flowers to their face. You know, you guys are two of greats. I, I can't believe how, I can't wait to hear how this album sound. Can't oh, wait right. to read the book. Can't wait to just keep supporting. No That's doubt. what we do over here. We support no each doubt. other, man. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, I got my DJ Khaled jacket on. I bought, I bought. I ain't get this for free, right. 99. Salud. <laughs> God damn. Hey. Mm. Make sure y'all check out Organic Food Kings at oh, Organic Food Kings. We got some food for y'all right here. I had yeah. a steak from Organic at Food Kings. Organic King. Food Kings. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm going to tell you when I was um, vegan shit. Vegan organic shit. Food Kings, they said, come through, we're going to take care of you. So I was oh. like, I got to go through because they showed me so much love. Right. I went through, but I did, the thing, I was on my, on my way to the airport. Right. And I was like, I don't want to eat vegan food in Does the car. You, shit? you think, you think it makes nah, shit? No, I don't want to eat vegan food <laughs> in the car with the mask and shit on the way to the airport. Right. And I'm like, it's not going to be good when I get to the airport. And I was like, I'm going to go anyway. And I went anyway. Right. Got the shit. 
and ate the shit at the airport. Mm. And the shit was, was still wild good. good. Was you farting? Was you farting? No, I wasn't farting. All right, cool. That's what I'm talking about. Don't fart. Wait, wait, wait. Three chance question. Was it farting? Yeah, there's no fart vegan food, you know, because a lot of vegan food make it be fart. Hey. I don't even know. Hey. You, you ever fuck with vegan food? I'm diving? A little bit, yeah. You yeah, do? Yeah. Right, man, fuck around, deep. man. That's my man right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. fart, huh? Yeah, sometimes I be farting. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes this interview is ridiculous. Yeah. This interview is going off the rails. Yeah. Hey, hey, man. Sometimes it's a good, healthy fart. You sometimes? Is that what the song was about? Yeah, sometimes you gotta fart. Sometimes you gotta fart and break. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta fart and lay. You know what I'm saying? It happens, man. It happens, man. Oh, let me finish the rest yeah. of this. D, you gotta, you gotta talk a little bit about Big L and the legacy oh, wow. of Big L and yes, working that. with Big L. Word. Yes. I feel like we don't. We don't talk enough about Big L. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Big L, you know, definitely was on his way to being one of the greatest. I think, yeah, you man. You know, people already look at him that way, and you know, he's been dead all these years. You know what I mean? Um, especially that one freestyle session he had with Jay Z on the Stretch Armstrong mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. Stretch and Bob Beetle, yeah. Kind of, he kind of handled Jay Z up there. Wow. You know okay, I gotta I mean? And then he was supposed to be signed to Rockefeller. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean. What can you say? You know, Lamont, definitely one of the best um, lifestyles of the... Um, Poor and Dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous, right? Then um, the, the second album, The Big Picture, that wound yeah. up going gold, and he wasn't even here to see that. And all the indie stuff right. he did. And What's Big yeah. Al, like the first street, when the streets, no, Scott the Rock was. When the streets got involved with a, 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 a rapper killing, but I was about to yeah, I, let, me, yeah, that was, let me correct myself. I think Scott LaRock was the first one. Oh, yeah, one. that was a D-Nice beef. He went over here to squash it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Who, Big L? No, nah, nah, Scott LaRock. Oh. Scott LaRock. It was a, uh, I, I, I think you said a D-Nice no. beef. Beef, I yeah. think you said well, a D-Nice beat. Why, oh, that's why, why I'm like, Rock, really? Why Scott LaRock wow, got that's that heavy, a D, man. That was a DJ D-Nice beef. Really? I, I've never heard this. You would like yeah, to talk yeah, about no, that? No, I think I've seen this somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Evidently, he went over there to try to squash it. Word. He's a social worker. He was doing some crazy... Dope Scott shit in the community, yeah. Scott LaRock, wow. But he's still in the hood like that. Mm -hmm. But definitely, Big L, definitely going, going too soon. Right. Wait, what was your favorite Big L joint, if you had to pick one? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I, I gotta pick them all. Like, I, I've never heard a rack Big L record. I've never heard a rack. I never, excuse me, let me go deeper than that. I've never heard a rack Big L verse. Okay. Like, I've never heard a verse where he just... You know, my favorite moment was I, I didn't even know he knew who I was. Okay. And I, I said this on the cam interview the other day. He was doing, he was like, yo, because it's like, yo, L, you fell back. You, it seemed like you wasn't rapping. He's like, no, I, I wasn't inspired until Cam, Nori, and DMX. And I was like, this nigga said Nori? I was like, yo, <laughs> that's crazy. He's, he's a hero yeah. to me. Like, yeah. I still be bugging out. Like, when a person, like, you know, uh, Shaq, we're like, what up, Nori? Like, what? You know who I am? Like, you know, because I, I, I just, I downplayed myself. But, um, that was my favorite moment. He had rhymed right before that. And just nice, the fact nice, that he nice. had recognized me because I don't think he understood how much I I, I, I admired him. You no know doubt. what I mean? So, like, I, I never expect a person I'm a fan of to be a fan of me. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't take away. Me like, neither, it doesn't take away. Right, like, right. like if I find out you're not a fan, I'll be like, all right, it's cool. You know, I still respect you. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yo, all right, now let me switch the subject a little bit, right? One of my favorite rappers of all time is this kid, guy named Granddaddy Ayu, right? Yeah. Granddaddy Ayu, that's, my, that's one of my number ones, right? But I never wanted to sound like Granddaddy Ayu. Okay. Why are these, why is everybody right now, you could say, yo, uh, this kid, a new kid could come out and his name could be Smoke Champ. Right. And he could say, yo, I, I, who's your favorite artist? You go, I like Future. And we could be like, we know, because we hear Future <laughs> all in your shit. Yo, real quick, didn't you uh -huh. just post something with Granddaddy Ayu? Yeah, I yeah, did, I did. But I wanted to be gay, no. No, 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 I'll, no, I'll come no, back no. to that. Okay, 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 okay yeah, I'll just come back to that. that. But why is, the, why is these guys actually sounding like the people that they're admiring and things like that? What, what is going on with this culture? What do you think? I think that hip-hop at some point, like every art form that becomes mainstream, started being made on an assembly line mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. And to where as they like, okay, especially when the radio station started being owned by certain corporations. Owning it you, across the country. Yeah, across the country. You programs. went from regional DJs right. and program directors having right. power to the right. point where it's like, well, you got to follow the playlist handed down No from more national. regional sounds, no more city right. sounds. None right. of that. So, right. yeah, it's just, it just becomes, it just becomes a, a, a contest to see who, had, who makes the most whoppers. Yeah, right. cookie cutter shit. 
Yeah, uh, and I think that so so kids who grew up listening to music like that, we grew up in an era where we heard different influences. Right. Or or you can't or like if you if you somebody who traveled, you went from New York to Miami, it's a whole different sound. Right. And so you were able to do you remember when like Uncle Luke used to come to New York? It was a, a party. He used to hang out with Red Alert yeah. and Funk Flex and all them. And it, it was a whole. It was like Uncle Luke's in town. We gonna do this Miami thing, but right. it was like definitely a different thing. Um, and I think the culture is missing sort of that respect for the for different what I will say indigenous sounds. Right. Um, and I, I think that um, that's that's the whole problem. So kids who growing up these days. Just like how we grew up, we grew up wanting to be successful. And we looked at our favorite artists and said, that's how you do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. To be different, to be creative. That was, that was that the was blueprint you, of success that was being Now success to us. is you just copy the next nigga. Right. They look at that and they say, okay, that's right. working. There was, there was an era when I, when I came into business where... Like this mad fake drink champs out there. Let's big them yeah, up. Yeah. Big y'all up, yeah. big y'all up. Some are successful, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I, I remember when I came in, that, so for me, the crew I was rolling with... <laughs> What I noticed the shift was people stopped wanting to be dope MCs and dope DJs. Puff was killing it. Right. People stopped wanting to be dope MCs. You would run into a motherfucker who love hip hop. And like, what you do? You DJ MC? No, nah. he said, no, nah, I'm a CEO. Mm -hmm. I'm an executive. People <laughs> wanted people wanted to be record executive. Yeah. Industry, industry people. Uh, and that was different uh, for me. Right. I'm like, I never wanted to be a record industry person, but now it's a thing that somebody wants to be. Oh, uh, I want to yeah. be a mogul. I want to be. Right, ain't nothing right. wrong with that. Right. You know, but it just that shifted. And so now kids, they see what's going on. They just want to be like this certain artist. Right. And, and why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they want to be like that? That's obviously a path to success. Right. They, not, they don't get the real, though. They don't right. know that that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. They don't know that one out of a million make it. They right. don't know that. So it becomes copies. All right. Shout out to the legend Jerobi who just Jirobi walked in. in the goddamn yeah. house. Yeah. Now, now, Diamond D, has there ever been a time, you know, you come from the no commercial era. Like, y'all motherfuckers was making the It was whack to be on the radio. I mean, do we it, all it not was, remember yeah, this it era? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So, Crossover? It, EPMD? Right, like, you're not supposed to be like, on the radio. Has there ever been a time a record label like came to you and said, yo, I want a crossover record? And if so, right. did you ever do it? Uh, probably the closest I came to that was um, the, the, um, the Black Panther soundtrack, that song Freedom. Had oh. all, all the top female artists singing on it. Oh, um, really? Pull this up, guys. Pull this up. Yeah. I want to see if you win commercial. I'm trying to check oh, you out. I mean, nah, I mean, I would. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a no commercial too, baby. <laughs> She's a business. You know what I mean? You don't want to plus. You don't. If you're a producer, you don't want to be pigeonholing to one thing. Right. Right. You right. I mean? Yeah. That makes so you yourself, never got doing you, yourself a disservice. You know how like they would say uh, it is a premier sound, or do you feel like Diamond D has a sound? Is it a certain sound to Diamond D? Or? Some would say I do, but I, right. I you know. I guess you don't in, think you in do? certain instances, I, I feel do, like you have a sound. If you listen to the, to the Don Piece albums, right. right? I mean, there's a it's fluid, but right. every joint is different. Right. I gotta say though, I can't I can't pick a Diamond D beat. Like, so you can't listen to a beat and say the Diamond like you D. Can't pick nah, it up I mean, I, if you tell me Diamond made it, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Right. But right. even with this Gotham album, right. there's so many different textures and sounds and flavors right. that I'm not like. It's not like I hear a beat and I'm like, oh, that's definitely a diamond D. Right, right. You know, I, don't, I don't have like that. how Pharrell and like Premier. Oh, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you hear a Pharrell beat. But it's, you know. not, it's not bad to it's be able to hear that's ill. That's it's ill. Not, it's not that's wrong with having a right, right. But it's also, it's also ill having a signature sound too. It's also yeah. ill because like. It's not wrong with it. Because everybody has this run when you're a producer where it's like, I'm sure, I'm now, no. Now, a producer might be able to do it. Like right. Premier, pre, you could you could answer this question better. Premier Pete Rock or somebody might you be maybe like that's a Diamond D beat. Right. Maybe they may, here might be yeah, trained, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. can't do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. They might know right. the sounds you usually use. Right. They you might know, know like, more. You know it's it's snares. You they, maybe they know the snare you use. Right. You know what's hella crazy that Jerome just came here and didn't I just say? I just watched a documentary. Right. 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 And then he just sleeps <laughs> back and it ain't shit. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's, that's just, crazy. It just fucking me up. I just run this up. I had no idea you was coming to. I just run it up. I just and um, shit, we're gonna bring you in, bro. But fuck it, might as well. But um uh, oh yeah, quick time of slide. Okay, uh, y'all ready? All right, so this we're gonna do this real quick, then we're gonna bring Jerome in. What are we gonna do? Uh, this, <laughs> this is quick time of slide. Quick answers. He wants so, an A and B answer. It's an A and B answer. But if you wanna say both, it's cool. You just gotta take a shot. 
If you say both, you gotta take a shot. If you, yeah, you, you want to be political, you gotta take the shot. You gotta take the shot. If you want to be political, okay. you gotta take the shot. Okay. All right. All right. All you right. ready? Yeah. First year, but this is it. Jay Z or Nas? <laughs> Jay Z. Oh. <laughs> I'm taking a shot. Take a shot. <laughs> good. 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 I like that. I like that. Hey, Amen. Oh, good. listen. Take that and then um, just fill yourself up again because I, I just know. Oh, you know? Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. You don't you gotta make you, yourself a crazy you, shot. You think you know me? Huh? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. I, I think it might. Oh, no, 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 I'm not sure with Diamond going with it. I'll be in solidarity with you. But, but, yeah. but Nas Ether was better. Okay. Okay. I respect that. No doubt. All but right. you went with Hold Jay, on, no right? caveats. No caveats. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. You ready? I'm starting with you. I'm starting with okay, you. Okay. Okay. Big L or big punt? Ooh. I'm gonna take a shot with you if you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put up right, right, right. I, 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 I gotta put my game face on for this and one. I, I, I think, I, I, I also, think, hold on, we didn't ask time yet. Yeah, hold on, hold on. One king. Big I'm, L I'm or big punt? Ahora me esta mierda, bro. Taking a shot? <laughs> Just take the shot, man. It's just something wrong with it, right? <laughs> Big Pun's rhymes to me were a little more. <laughs> his, 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 his rhyme schemes a little more intricate. Doesn't mean that he Go was on. better or not, but his rhyme was just, you know, a little more intricate, right. in my opinion, right. than Big L at that, at, at, at that time. Okay. I mean, you know, they both giants, but that's my answer. I don't know what that answer means. Hold on. He <laughs> said Big Pun. I would assume that. I would say Big Pun. All right, cool, cool. I, I, I would say Big Pun. Okay, all right, cool. I'm taking Only my Only because okay. of his rhyme structure. What happens to the bottle? Okay. Okay. Diamond keeps his rhyme, his rhyme structure. All right, all right. Come I'm on, taking a shot. We in the C's, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We keep it real. Right. I'm about to walk out here fucked up and miss my gig like I did last time I did drink. <laughs> oh, don't do that. We don't fuck up here. You're in your bag right now. You need to take your shot because I'm starting with you with this All right, all right, all right. All right. I'm gonna start having to fucking answer these questions. Kanye or Premier? In terms of what? Production. Yeah, production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they only in one category. In terms of just production. Just, production. just straight production. Just straight production. Premier. Okay, that's good. I, I'm, I, I. Premier. Okay. Let me get that lighter. Most deaf or common? Who are you asking that to? Both of y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of what? Yeah. In terms I of thought what? you was down there. Like, in terms of what? Like, acting skill? Right. What you talking acting about? Acting skill. <laughs> movie, movie, We're talking about acting, acting, right? In terms of acting skill? No, no. no. We're talking about MC. 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 That was, that's a, yo, Common is an MC motherfucker. Of course. And so is Most Death. I've watched that motherfucker. Him that, on man, that's a, that's a good Most pair Death on the Dave Chappelle riding through Brooklyn. I, thought, yeah, yeah. I think it was Brooklyn. Right. Right. That's a good pair. Don't pair-o. push me. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Blah, 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 I said, Pat, just see. Well, uh, so listen, you gotta be careful. That's a good pair, but they totally different I'm styles. T- I'm gonna teach you how to answer and still be politically correct. Oh, I need to, I need to hear this. Let's see. I'm gonna answer and, and still if, be and if you're, I'm satisfied, I'm gonna take a shot for you. But if not, right. you gotta do the shot. Let no, but just... I'm, I'm gonna give an answer. Okay, let's go. Right? I'm gonna pick most deaf. You should have. <laughs> and that's all I gotta say. God, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Comment. 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 Okay, I, I can see that. All right, this is gonna be crazy. Look, Jerobi wasn't even know he was here. <laughs> Midnight Marauders or Low End Theory? Ooh. Shot time. <laughs> uh, Jerobi gotta leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> Jerobi gotta answer the question too. <laughs> uh, uh, no, Midnight no, no, Marauders. we don't want okay. to answer but, 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 gonna be, because we having a real we, deep hip hop discussion. We need okay. his answer too. In though. terms of After. what? It's just Album. Oh, Album. Yeah, it's raw. It's quick on assignment. It doesn't have much deep. I really, I, really want, you know? I really want Jerobi's answer. After. We're going to get his after, yeah, but exactly. we don't want him to fuck up your opinion. So we want to hear yours first. Remember, you can go both. I'll drink with you. I'm going to say. Uh-huh. Midnight Marauder. As a producer, Midnight Marauder. Okay. Definitely, the okay. You, you just heard the the progression in the right. production. Jerome, that, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> that was hard, by the way. That was hard. Yeah, that was hard. Yeah, Turn the camera to Jerome. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, Diamond. He's right, right. Yeah. But 
My favorite is low and third because that's Fife's emergence. Wow. 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 Let's make some right. noise for that, goddamn. I'm gonna take a shot just for that. The emergence of Fife Dog. Yeah. But it's like Godfather and Godfather 2. There is no Midnight Marauders without Low End Theory mm, or without mm, people sustaining. Mm. Okay. Miami or LA? Either one of y'all could go. Miami, that's easy. Yeah, I was about to say, there's a lot of Miami motherfuckers in here. <laughs> I mean, that's, I didn't even think Miami. about that. Fact, right. man, also that. They both said Miami. Now, this one right here, I'm up in the air. Independent or major? Independent. Independent. You, you losing these, man. Uh, we have this independent versus major debate. Oh, I'm a major and guy. And I, I'm not talking right. independent. Tell me why you're a major guy. Because I'm lazy to a certain extent. I, that's, 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 real shit. Shit. that's real shit. That's real shit. That's real Because shit. sometimes you just need a good partner no, that's a real, to handle the business. Yeah. So you can just, right. yeah. I get that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I just, I love that. But, but let's get out of a quick time of slime and then we'll, we'll come back. Oh, okay. It's not, it's not going to be good for you. Buck Wild or Large Pro? Oh, man. Take the shot? Take the shot. I don't know. Oh, you, you I'm going to take the shot. Take the shot. All right. Oh. <laughs> so, so I think you're taking the shot, too. I feel like you're taking the shot, too. That's hard to pick. I'm going with Large Pro. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going okay. Large Pro, not because it's all respect due to the great, the great legendary Buck Wild. Yeah. Okay. Legendary. But for me personally, you know, sometimes you have a personal relationship with Art. Yeah, what what Large, Large Professor did for me personally with that break of the Adams album. Wow. I was, I was living with that album. Wow. It was like a, it was a personal like he made it thing. for you. It was a personal okay, thing. Okay, I respect that. Yeah. You shouldn't take a shot for that. All right. <laughs> Back to Brooklyn. <laughs> Little Kim or Foxy Brown? I think somebody had that on there. <laughs> If it was just woman power, remember. <laughs> woman power. Woman. Wait, no, 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 this is tequila? Oh, that's not so right? Okay, I'm in. I take this shot. <laughs> I'm interested to hear what you're going to say. Little Kim or Foxy Brown? Another shot? Because that's your old shot. Yo, I'm taking this game. I'm playing this game with my friends. <laughs> Just credit us. I like I, I like Foxy a little more. Okay, I, I respect that. I Big like up, Foxy Big a little sis. more. Four five king or showbiz? <laughs> you asking me? Yeah, he asking you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going with show uh, forty five king. Okay. Just because of that Godfather analogy I made earlier. Mm, okay. One can't come without the other. Before. Right. Right. Where we going, Diamond? Drinking whiskey? <laughs> yeah, you might as well. This segment was supposed to be sponsored by. All right, all right, all right. All right. Cause they they Yo, both they both made joints that only they could have made. I, I I can't really answer that. Yeah, joint. my boy Breon. Where be pulling up? All right, um, all right. <laughs> I think this this one should fairly. Now, how be long easy. is this game? No, this is <laughs> only three more questions. It's a long time a slime. It's, 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 it's only three, three 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 more questions. Okay, <laughs> this one should fairly be easy for both of y'all. Stretch and Barbito versus the Wake Up Show. I'm going with Stretch and Bob because of personal experience. I'm going with Stretch and Bob too. Sorry, Sway. Sorry, sorry, King Tech. Yeah, sorry, King Tech. We just, we just. I'm gonna bounce it out with Sway and King Tech. You you gonna take a shot for that? Nobody asked you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Cardi B or Nicki Minaj? Nicki. That was fast. Taking a shot because you remember, woman improvement. What does that have to do with this answer? I don't know. <laughs> I just want to take another shot. <laughs> <laughs> They're both women. It's both. <laughs> Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? In terms of what? Being an MC. Being an MC. They're very talented. They're very talented. That's an artist. I see Cardi B do some shit. That is the only lawyer during quick time of slime. I see Cardi B do some shit with the Grammys. That nobody. You can pass me that lighter, Diamond D. So what, what like are we talking about here? In terms of what? In terms of uh, whatever artist, you want it to be. It's an artist, an overall artist. Overall artist. Overall artist, artist yes. Yeah. He's throwing curveballs over here. Mm. Mm. He said 10 minutes. Overall artist. Uh-huh. I reserve the right to change my answer. <laughs> I reserve the right to change my answer in 10 years. 
Okay. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Never heard this. <laughs> so in 10 years, we have to, even if we're not doing Dream Champs, we're going to come back I and do this again. I change my answer in 10 years. Okay. But well, as of now, yes. as incredible as Cardi B is, mm. Nicki Minaj has done some shit. So I'm going with Nicki. Okay. All right. That took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. This should be fit. No, this might be, you might be taking a shot to this. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, take a shot. So on three. Ah. Uh, Dipset or the locks? Locks. Locks. Really? That was very easy. I didn't think I didn't think you guys would go. No, that. listen, dipset is incredible. <laughs> Dipset changed the game. Question. I can't answer that question. Dipset changed the game. Right. But for me personally, that's right. what it is. And now we get into the, what, the question you had. It's about yeah. how you personally feel, how something exactly. hits you. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I respect right. that. Okay. Red <laughs> 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 alert or kick a pre? Ooh. I'm going I'm taking red alert. Taking my shot right now. I'm going with the. I'm going with. I'm going red, red alert. I'm going. I'm going with because because that I, should be the Godfather no analogy yeah. as well. I'm, I'm going red, red alert because I st I got into hip hop like '85, '86, '87, and around the time when I got into hip hop, I, I wasn't in the streets. Right. I was a little kid. My hip hop experience came from listening to Red Alert or Kiss FM and right. Jeff Fox to Rock's Box and all that type of shit. You taking a shot? You taking a shot? Diamond is oh, from no, the Bronx. This, this from the last joint. Okay. The last. <laughs> but I got an answer for this. You got an answer? You got an answer? You got an answer? 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 My answer is Red Alert because Red Alert influenced Kid Capri. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. It's the Godfather thing. And I'm going to tell y'all, my answer should be Red Alert too. He influenced Kid Capri. I, I had so much more experience. Like, it was... Me going to Kicker Priest parties mm -hmm. right. that made me say this might be the baddest DJ. Oh yeah, yeah. Kicker yeah, Priest is not to be his name it. is not to be slandered. Right. And Kicker Pri and his and production on the Big L shit and certain shit he's per, done for the culture. Kicker Priest is a The Jay Z joint he produced from Def Comedy Jam and just like Kicker Pri and and even just now I posted I reposted some shit Kicker Pri posted on Instagram about uh about. Work, making sure you work with people who really appreciate you. And I was like, yo, just, just so everybody knows, I need to work with Kid Capri. Wow. I'm saying Kid Capri is an absolute legend. He's one of absolute. my favorite human beings. Right. Fuck uh, DJ. And he'd probably he's say Red Alert. He's, he'd right. probably he's say one of my Red favorite Alert. human beings. Right. Yeah, I just see, I, just, I see, I, like, I was in a, like, I think I, I was in D.C. one day with him, the next day in, in North Carolina, the next day somewhere else, and he would equally rock the party with different sets. Like, he wouldn't repeat his sets. And that was the first time I had right. saw that. His sets were like, organic. Right. And organic. Let it be like, he would and make let it, it towards the people let it be that he was yeah. playing for. Red Alert can't do what Kid Capri do. Right. But Kid right. Capri is not Red Alert. Right. Okay, this is the last one. It's pretty much 80s or the 90s. That's a fucking good question. I think it is. In terms of what? Era. Ten year, that ten year Damn, gap. Damn, but <coughs> that ten year a, eighty. That all. ten years what fucks it up. The yeah. ten. Because if you shift the ten between uh, eighty five and ninety five, I'm going with the eighties. To go with MC Hammer and them niggas. That's the one. I'm no. Wait, what are you saying? <laughs> MC Hammer does not define it. Are you, oh, fuck see, that's. And not for nothing. Looking back, <laughs> no, MC okay, Hammer is no, fucking amazing. This, this bro. Is asked, this looking back, this is why I asked. This is why I asked. Yeah, yeah. When I said yeah. in terms of what, are we talking about specifically hip hop? Are we talking yeah. about the era? Are you talking about because hip hop? Well, specifically of, hip hop. That, well, then, then yeah. my answer changed to the nineties. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because the eighties. When you said eighties versus nineties in terms of era. In terms of era, right. the 80s is superior. Yeah, but they, the I, 80s, end of 80s hip hop set up the 90s hip hop. Right. 90s hip hop is. The end of the 80s good. was. It's great, but it's set up by the late 80s. But in terms of hip hop, right. yeah. 90s hip hop, if you go to any party on the planet, on any on any party on the planet right now. Right. No, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And you right. play any type of music. If the DJ decide that he want to do 15, 20 minutes of just 90s hip hop. No, you're right. That's going to be the best part of the party. Wow. I ain't thinking you know about it like that, but you're right. If he play nothing, right. the DJ doing nothing. Nah, we, nothing is in 2000. Oh, that's just 2000. Yeah, what, 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 what? Right. what from what, a 90s what, what artist. From a 90s artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he yeah. throwing Annie up. 
Yo, yes. If you're doing a scenario, yeah. yep. if you're doing a scenario, yep. if you're doing House of Pain, jump around. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? If you're doing yeah. House of Pain, jump around in a scenario, and then Annie Some up, Cypress Hill in there. And then there. Biggie, no money, no more money, more problems. Yeah. And then I, how could, how, just kill a man. And if, if you go into a public enemy set, if you do right. Fight the Power, what the, what are we Fight right. the power is the 80s. That's late yeah. 80s. That's, 80s. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's 80s. It gets a blur. That's, That's what you say 85 right. to 95. That's, 80s. That's, That's right. the as best. As a, producer, era. Right. as a producer, I would say 90s because the late 80s is when the sampler becomes right. in effect. Mm. And hip hop got away from the live instrumentation right. of, of the early to mid 80s. Did we bring them in without so saying it was break? more of getting back to the essence. You know what I mean? Um, so that would be my answer. So 19, 1988. 1988. What? It's the best year of hip hop of all time. What? Google told you that? Yeah, no. I listen to Google. You saw me Googling it, right? Yeah, but I I'm listen a, to Google. No. Fuck Google. No, 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 Strictly Business, EPMD. Mm -hmm. Long Live the Kane. It's all 88? 88. Yeah, it's follow, follow the Leader. Yep. By Any Means Necessary. Yep. Straight Out the Jungle. He's the DJ, I'm the rapper. Wow. Critical Beatdown. Wow. Tougher Than Leather. <laughs> Light as a Rock. MC Light. Easy Does It. Going Off, Easy. Biz Marquee. The biz mark is a going, going off. The biz mark is a going, going off. off. Go, go, go. And what else? In full gear, Stetsasonic. Mm. Talking all that jazz. All in 88. Crazy. In control, volume one, Symphony. For Molly Mar. Right. Act the fool, King T. But look, look, listen. Look, 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 Power, Ice T. Assault with a deadly pepper. So all right, so that's 1988? All this is 88. It right. takes two raw bass. One of the best records of all time. What more can I say? Audio 2. <laughs> the world's greatest entertainer, Dougie Fresh. He rises. All that in one year? I need you to Google Jesus 1988. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you the next year to come after that. I, I, I've done my research. The next year after this, 89 now? No. <laughs> no. You're the like, next, the is next it 89? Year, is next that year, the next year? The next year that got as many dope albums as that is 96. I, 96 is ill. All right, who's in 96 in this chapter? I feel right like here? I feel like to live in 96. <laughs> I'm not in 90, I didn't come out to 98. Okay. I was told that's my first year I told you to Google next. It was 98, because that's a 10 year span. 98, 90, 98. No, that, you said 88. 98 is my year. Yeah, 88 to 98. But really quick, before you say those, everything you mentioned in 88 set up the 90s. A lot of, all that music influenced everything that happened in the early 90s. Right. Yeah, what you reading? This is what, what year is this? 96 or 98? Okay, that was 88. Okay, 88. Okay, 96 is. I might be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me start. Okay. Tupac, all eyes on me. Fire. The yep. Fuji's the score. Yep. Fire. You got a Grammy for that, right? Mass Kills from where? Wasn't the commercials? Wasn't commercials? No, no. That's a that's that's a classic album. That's a classic album. We had Mass Kills. Conscious Daughters, Gamers. Mm. Bahamadia Collage. Classic. Bahamadia. Smooth the Hustler, Once Upon classic. a Time in America. Okay. Classic. Buster Rhymes, The Coming. Classic. Okay. That's 96? It's 96. Yeah. Right? Beastie Boys, The In Sound from Way Out. Ghetto Boys, The Resurrection. Mm. Master P, Ice Cream Man. Uh, I might be wrong about 96. <laughs> yeah, 96 is not 88. Yeah, I'm like, Souls takes us high. Classic. Nas it was written. Classic. Star X, uh, Wild Cowboys, Beach Rhymes of Life, Tribal Quest. Classic. Uh, uh, AT Aliens. Classic. Uh, no, it's not the same. Can we not the same. Bring him in without taking a break? Though, without taking a break. 88. Let's do 98. Let's do 98 and then let's 98? wrap it up. Let's do wrap and I'm going to take a PP8. All right, cool. We, 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 we'll bring you in. We don't want to take a break. We need to bring, bring Jerome right, in, Jerome but in. I don't want to um, take a break, though. Yeah. Well, you can go use the bathroom, though, if you want. No, I'm good. I'm okay, good, yeah, I'm cool for right now. No, so 98 was what? 98. Okay, so 98 is the year that Black Star came out. Okay. Well, September, in September of 98, okay. five hip hop classics dropped. Really? In September of 98. The okay. same day that the Black Star album dropped. Is that um is that not 9/11? No. Okay. 98. 
The same day that the Black Star album dropped. Well, read the whole year for right, 98. I'm not, but I'm a, I'm a, Black Star dropped 98. Okay, September 98. September 98. Okay. Aquemini. 400 Degrees Juvenile. Capital Punishment, big pun. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Foundation by Brand Nubian. Beats Rhymes in Life by Charcoal Quest. Moment of Truth by Gangstar. 98 might be the year. 98, but I'm telling you. 98 might be the year. better no, be the not, not Beats Rhymes in Life, The Love Movement, okay. which Nori was which on. Which I was on, yes. 98. My only Charcoal Quest. I don't know why I keep calling it. Okay. Okay, this, is, this one's about to seal the deal. About to seal the deal. Money, Power, Respect by The Locks. Mm. We could go. We could go head up with eight and eight. I'm about to. I'm about to seal. I'm about to seal the E L E by Buster Rhymes. Yes. Can I bust by Cannabis? Wow. Okay. Still standing by the Goody Mob. Wow. This is a, a slept on album. Soul Survivor by P Rock. Wow. Okay. I already yep. mentioned. Remember, I, I think said, I'm on uh, Soul Survivor too. Yeah. Remember, I said uh, Brand New Being Foundation. Right. That came out that in '98. Hello, nasty by the Beastie Boys. Mm. That's a fucking good album. Wow. Want another year now? '98. Hello, nasty. You know what, Nori? Thank you. '98 is my new '96. Yeah. '98 was a good year. That's my favorite flesh year of my, my life. Flesh, blood in my blood by yep. DMX. Yeah, yeah, that's my, my year, my best year, what year of my life. What you drop, Ninety eight. Ninety eight. I'm waiting for my album to pop right, up. Right. You mean good? Wait, fucking with me? <laughs> oh, uh, this this is an incredible album. El Nino by the Def Squad. Mm. Fat mm. Joe, Don Carter. Mm. Classic. I'm on that album too. All right. N O R E. Oh, they, they, I popped up. I popped up. I'm near. N O R E. I'm looking good back then. N O R E. N-O-R-E by Nori. Right. Okay, but here's the album that I'm on that niggas don't even know. I'm not, I'm not on this. Okay, I'm not, I'm not on this album. I'm on a remix. Sons of Men. Woo! The last should be first, and the first should be last. Shout out to Heaven Razor. You're on that? Right? I'm, on, right? I'm on a remix. Okay. Uh, I thought I was on the album. <laughs> Sons of Men is ill. Killer Priest, um, 60 Second Assassin. DMX. It's dark and the cell is right. hot. Yeah, he got DMX two out. He got year, two in that year, yep. yeah. He was the first artist in history yes. to have platinum twice in one year. Mm. I was there. I was there. Yeah, 98 I was, was ill. I was there. Capadonna the Pillage. I was Nori, there. Sour? You're right. Nori, this is the year. I was there. Bobby Blue Digital. And you, Bobby Digital. I'm going to let you keep going. I'm going to tell you how to Exhibit, tough. 40 Days, 40 Ooh. Nights. That's, that's um, what you see is what you get now. Yeah. yeah. Classic video. Yeah. MOP, First Family for Life. Classic. Ooh. The Cool. Steal this album. Classic. Rest in peace, the DJ, right? She passed away? Ice passed Cube, away. War and Peace, volume one and two. I'm on that too. You on that? I'm on That's that. That's why Ice Cube was dissing East Coast niggas. No, I ain't on that. I ain't on that. <laughs> Which one? The West Side Connection? What did you say? What album was that? What wait, album was wait, that? Wait, wait, Google War and Peace, volume one and two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ice Cube was wild out. Wait, Google West Side Connection. I'm on Ice Cube. I'm on all. I think I'm on We Be Clubbing Remix or something. Yeah, you're on the remix. We Be Clubbing Remix, right? We Be Clubbing but DMX oh, is on the remix. Or on Yo, the me and Most Def used to do Black Star shows in that era, and we used to perform a version of that song. And we used to be like, we be clubbing, little baby seal, so we can make coats. We be clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> push it, wait. Push your eyes like, wait. Okay. Oh, push, yeah, that's it. What yeah, year was that? What that's what's going on. 1998. I'm still in 98. That's, that's, a, that, that's a great joint, right. too. Uh, Spike Lee, he got game. 98, that's 98. I said, I was on a well, Ice Cube record in 98. Actually, I think yeah. that, that, that Ice Cube was pretty effects, dope, actually. Generation Effects. AC Alone, A Book of Human Language, dope. which is actually a very good album. No, very good album. Black Eyed Peas, Behind the Front. What? That was before Fergie. Yeah, when yeah, I, yeah when that I was, was when there was the, the Black underground Eyed Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, look yeah. at Todd Lib getting his hip-hop on. Go ahead, you hip-hop professor <laughs> ass nigga. Let's do it, man. <laughs> 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 
was hard. It's 98. It's 98, right? 98 looking like 88. WC the shadiest. Buster Rock Imperial. Daz Dillinger, Revenge Retaliation, Lyricist Lounge. Wait, Buster volume dropped two one. albums that year? The Lyricist Lounge. Did you name Buster twice? No, once. Oh, okay, that was just once. Oh, I'm right, on cool. that Lyricist Lounge album. Okay, God damn it. Anybody want to move? Tupac, I know. Oh, okay, okay, uh, Cameron, Confessions of Fire. That's what a nigga I'm had. I'm on, on that too. Right, that's what a nigga I'm had. I'm on that too. That's what a nigga Cameron had. You know what I'm saying? He had the mallet. Yo, listen, Dr. D. You know what I'm saying? 1998. Yo, listen, 98 was my favorite yeah. year, period, like, <laughs> of my life. The only thing that's bitter about it, my father died in the middle of my height. I don't even want to talk about it. Okay, let's finish, finish, finish. Big Daddy Kane dropped Veterans Day, which is an underrated album. Which one? Veterans Day, Big Daddy Kane. Oh, yeah. Um, Styles of Beyond, 2000 Fold, mm -hmm. great album. Me Method Man, to Cal 2000. Wow. Shit, 98 is fucking. Shit. Corruption. Oof, Corru yeah. Corruption. Classic. Onyx, shut him down. Classic. Um, Snoop Dogg, The Game is to Be Sold, Not to Be Told, with No Limit. That's the No Limit. That's a classic, too. AZ, Pieces of a Man. Yeah, that's the best year. That's man. a good I, year. I learned on Drink Champs today that 1998. 98. Can mess with 1988. It depends. It's great. You know what we should do? I'm going to still you know, give it to 88, though. You know what? You know, 88 still got it. You know, what, you know what's actually an ill versus? Yo, listen, listen, listen. Because I was I only, I love verses, and I'm, I'm actually a little bit a part of it. But the only thing that I didn't <laughs> a little like, a little, a little bit part of it, you know what I mean, Charles. But um, like, I didn't like the D'Angelo. Bringing out people. No, that was D'Angelo versus himself. Yeah, right. D'Angelo versus himself. Well, that was like D'Angelo versus his, his If we're going to go there, why don't we do something like that? Where it's 1988 versus 1998 and have some of the but artists. That would be a logistical come, nightmare. Oh my God, yeah, that would be dope. Oh nah, but it'd it, it be like, what's up, Joe? Shout out to D'Angelo. Right. By the way, who's yeah. fucking killing it? Have a great DJ. And he had Keon Harold on there. And right. No, yeah. that was dope. Yeah. You no, know, it was dope, but it was but just weird. Because it was D'Angelo versus D'Angelo. It's not what you want from Versus. Yeah, yeah. But imagine you do 1988 versus 1998 and you have these artists. You get as much artists from both eras that's still alive, that's still good. That's the beautifulest thing about coming to America. Is they got all the same actors, and you get their, these people perform their records. I think that would be. So, wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that you're a fan of Coming to America I too? I love Coming to America too. I, are you, we going we to go have this conversation? Uh, are, are we, we going to talk go about there? this? Are we, are we going to get into it? I think oh, it was a well made movie. Oh, you're uh, also a fan. I don't understand what, 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 what's there not to like about it. Word. You know what? I'm about to blow y'all minds. You hated it? I enjoyed it. I love it. It's not better, obviously. Because it was, I know, I know a, that people, it was a good movie. Listen, I'm a fan of movies. Mm. I know that people had a lot to say about it, mm. but it's very hard to make a sequel. Absolutely, and right. the, the, of the a running, classic on top. The running of that. theme of tonight is Godfather versus Godfather mm -hmm. Two. I right. brought this up several times. Right. We'll call it. We'll title the episode. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> I brought this up several times. Right. I enjoyed it because it was good to see. My OGs and my heroes having fun. That's yeah. Was it as good as coming to America? Absolutely not. But right. did only I expect it to Cuban be as good as it? Too is it not was as good as no, I did not expect it to be. It was entertaining. But it still it was well made. It was well made. No, it was it was it was good, right. man. We gotta, was, gotta support. I didn't like the fashion over part, and I didn't like the part where homeboy but started rapping. Fashion over. He started rapping. Hold on. I was like, come on, buddy. Right, right. Uh, it turned into uh, Hamilton, and look at what I'm saying. Yeah, come on. I didn't want that. I like the sexual chocolate before. That was the very end. That was the best part. But the reason why they had fashion over and Pepsi and. Puma. Is that what funded yeah. it? And all the other brands. It's because when you make a movie, you get paid for the movie. Yeah, you, yeah. So you get paid for the, you know. But here's the thing. Right. They should have, the only thing I will say creatively, the reason why Coming to America, the first one was dope, is because it's a fish out of water story. Right. It's a, a fictional African character coming to New York City, Queens, and living. Right. This new movie took place in Zamunda. Right. Right. If it, if, they, if it take place in They New built York, a fake Queens, too. That was fake. I was offended. But go ahead. They, they said it was Elmhurst. That is nowhere else in the, in the world. That, Elmhurst uh, is where Kenny plays from. Yo, listen, man. When, that, <laughs> they, when they put the, um, you know, I, you know, I'm rewinding. I'm looking. I'm blowing the city. They said Elmhurst, New York. I was like, that ain't fucking Elmhurst. Where, they, where um, uh, they was getting married. Right, right, you know, right. if you look at this shit real good, it says right. Elmhurst, and I'm just so because I'm ten minutes away from Elmhurst, so I know everything. So that, but that's me personally. That's me personally. Uh, <laughs> the fact that, and they put out Barrow. 
Like, Queens is very really much mentioned. Queens is mentioned, and, mentioned and coming a to lot, America a lot. 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 Wesley Snipe, Snipe killed it. Wesley Yo, Snipe, he fucking amazing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Y'all, y'all in charge? But can we get a, 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 a drink champs clap for uh, Wesley Snipe? Hell yeah! yeah. Let's give it a hug. Yo, um, and I gotta give it up one million percent. I've never met her. I actually just. See her comedies before, and I see her stand up prior to me watching it. But Leslie, Leslie Jones, Jones. Oh, she's she's dope, so listen to me as a person who my whole life I dedicate ghetto Queens woman. She hit it on the news. <laughs> <laughs> she hit it on the news. I'm telling you, she yeah, hung out with some hood rats Leslie from Jones. Queens. She hung out with some hood she's rats dope. from Queens, and she hit it on the nose. No, she's that person. When she said, "Hey, Queen, I'm sorry, I slept with your man." That's exactly <laughs> how. Look, one day, know? one day, when I'm an old man, <laughs> one day when I'm an old man, uh-huh. I'm gonna tell the world about my DM conversations with Leslie. Jones. <laughs> Leslie, Leslie, Leslie slid into your DMs. No, she, 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 she I slid into hers. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, some comedy shit. I'm like, you feel yeah, Okay. <laughs> hey, just relax. Y'all niggas just relax. Everybody's you calm down. You said you're going to tell us. Everybody's calm down. Yeah, because why you got to wait 10 years to tell us? Yeah, like, what, hey, what, what we get your mind here? out the gutter, <laughs> two champs. <laughs> what we been, what we He's like, it's a statute of limitations <laughs> on my DS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pause, pause, man, private. Don't worry right. about it. Right, right, right. right. Chirobi know me for real. Right, right. No, everybody, uh, everybody, single men here? Uh, no, not you. No, I know that. Right, no, no, no. You single, single man, Tyler? Me? Yeah. As far when is this coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm never coming out. Yeah, 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 i am never coming out yeah 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 i am never coming
for, for, for them to be a part of this company that he did on his own, this is big. Like, you ever thought that hip-hop would go this far? Um, no, I didn't. Um, right. But mm -hmm. I attribute that to how we grew up. Right. Mm -hmm. We had limitations. We had, like, blinders put on right. as far as what we could imagine. Like, we all just got, everybody in this room mm -hmm. got into it because you wanted somebody, me, me personally, it was like, you wanted somebody to just think you was nice. Right. And if you read Jay-Z's book, he talk about that. He talk about, he say, it all comes down to the rhyme. Like, everything I, 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 I gain attributed to, like, I just wanted to write the best raps and everything. And if, like, if you appreciate this culture, you put your all into it, things like this will happen. Mm. We, we come from situations where we made to feel like something's wrong with us if we aspire outside of what the hood supposedly represent. Mm -hmm. And this is why Jay-Z is such an important artist and human being, is because he breaks the barriers constantly. Mm -hmm. And he, 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 he involved all of us in it. Yep. He makes sure that all of us, at least the people where, where he come from, he makes sure all of us uh, see a part of it and a piece of it. Right. Even whether, whether or not you end business with him, right. through the way he's making his moves. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and what I was saying earlier about conscious artists. Right. I can't grow no hair now. Right. But back when I was a teenager, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. When I was a teenager, I had dreads. Right. And my dreads looked like John uh, uh, Michelle Basquiat. Yeah, my, that's my, what Hope looking like. Yeah, right that's right. Basquiat. Yeah. I seen Kodak right. Black, and shout out to Kodak Black, because right. he's a Florida artist. Right. Yep. I seen him saying that JD was copying his hairstyle. <laughs> that's, some, that's some young boy shit. He just never seen <laughs> Basquiat. He really no, said Basquiat, that? Yeah. yeah. Because Jay Z's copying Basquiat. I, I love how, I love, I love how you pronouncing it right. Because I cannot. I say Basquiat. He said Basquiat. He said Basquiat. He got French for real. He ain't right, 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 right. He got French. He, he went above Haiti. He got French on you. No, and so, I'm sure it goes so, beyond Basquiat. No, but even, for him, you know, even. but even, even the old time, even if Kodak Black is a little misguided with his with his historical references as far as coming right. hip hop. The fact that he grew his hair out like that is revolutionary. Right. The fact that Bascat did that is revolutionary. Yeah. The fact that Jay-Z, when I see Jay-Z, I'm like, that's how my hair looked when I was in high school. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it all comes full circle. It's like, I'm like, yo, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed, we supposed to be free. We're supposed to be embracing our, 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 our blackness or whatever you are. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to embrace it right. and be free. And um, I just love the freedom. And the fact that his freedom has led to him being... An astute businessman. And he's we, we more can do conscious this, right now. Too. We could do this business. Right. He could do this type of business, and him and his wife and his family right. could do conscious art right. and still contribute to conscious causes and still win awards and all that. Beyonce, the most winningest artist of all time in the Grammys or whatever. God damn it. Let's make some right. noise for that. Yeah, it's just crazy. Um, how about you, Diamond? Nah. You no know, way. Nah. 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 No way. Right. To, to see the culture come from black and brown people having block parties, plugging the equipment up to the lamppost, right. to something that Jay-Z just did, right. or uh, DJ D-Nice in, in a Ford truck commercial. Shout yeah, out, shout out to D-Nice. D-Nice, nice, man. Right. Come on, man. Right up. Let's go, Derek. No way. Kanye no way. sneakers. Right. All, right. All that. No right. way. Uh, it's a test amount, though, you know, to, to the culture that we started. Right. So, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, man. Well, you know what? On that note, let's end this and say, you know what? God bless hip-hop. Uh, it's blessed everyone in this room to a certain extent. Um, uh, like I said, man, one of the... Uh, I keep watching this trial court documentaries, and I think that that's one of the most... Um, slept on hip hop tool is the hip hop documentary. Mm -hmm. It's like we all, you know what I love about documentaries is it's like, you know, you ever watch the HBO fights? You know, they make sure everybody has a story. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. and that's what the documentaries is. And mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear about this Black Star documentary. I'm excited to hear about you guys' album. When, yeah, when is, is Gotham yeah. out when? Yeah. Uh, April 26th. On the 16th. 16th. April 16th. April 16th. Okay, yeah. we'll try to put this out that week or that, or right. that which, so we can help with the promotion. But no doubt. overall, man, thank you, brothers, for taking your time out right. to come with us and get drunk and have some drinks. We're going to do some drops and some uh, pictures, and we, we got this. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday,